Martial World. Author, Cocooned Cow. Translator, Hyolin Maru. In the Divine Realm, countless legends fought over a mysterious cube. After the battle it disappeared into the void. A young man stumbles upon this mystery object, opening a whole new world to him. His name is Lin Ming, and this is his road of martial arts. Arc 01. The Seven Profound Martial House. Chapter 0. Magic Cube. In the vast and limitless expanse of mist and snow, endless ice shards swirled in the wind and collided in a violent maelstrom. Sub-zero temperatures chilled one's bone to a freezing cold temperature, as if it would turn even one's very soul into nothing but ice. Here, was the snowfall realm, within the myriad dimensions of the realm of the gods. It was a bleak and hopeless land of endless, blinding white tundra. From one year to the next, there was nothing but desolate snow, and the bitter cold. Within these bleak fields of ice, the wind picked up, and dozens of ice shards whistled through the air, revolving and condensing in a vast eddy. Within this current, a shimmering mercurial veil bloomed into existence, and in the next second, a woman in a sapphire blue dress emerged. The woman's aura was like a regal queen. Her raven black hair flowed like a river of the purest ink. Every inch of her body exuded an aura of holiness. In this desolate wasteland, it was as if the most beautiful pure ice lotus had fully bloomed. The only flaw on her otherwise perfect features was a thin stream of bright red blood that dripped down from the corners of her red lips. That mercurial veil began to fade, and the woman spat out a mouthful of blood. It was as if this beautiful ice lotus was wilting. Big sister, a girl's voice resounded clearly in the crisp air, and a shining white light flew from the woman's body and condensed into the shape of a frantic young girl. Sister, are you all right? Do not worry. The blue-clothed woman beckoned with her hand. She'd already suffered a grievous wound, and had forcefully shattered the barriers of space and time in order to pass through the limitless voice and the infinite night to arrive at a different dimension within the realm of the gods. This had caused her previously serious injuries to compound even further. Where is this? The sapphire blue-clothed woman asked. The young girl pulled out a jade slip and probed it with her divine sense. Sister, we've arrived at the snowfall realm. Snowfall, the sapphire blue clothed female said with a trace of shock, before she sighed. Of the three thousand dimensions within the realm of the gods, I've traveled through the infinite void to countless ones. I fled, but to think that I would end up in the one place that I didn't wish to go. She laughed bitterly. My name is Mo Qian Zhu, and I was named after the snow. Snowfall, snowfall. Here, I too will fall. Big sister, we. The young girl began, but the air trembled, and a massive amount of energy poured into the air. In the next moment, space began to be ripped open, as if was being torn about by a pair of cruel hands, and a black-clothed man walked out from the void. The young girl saw this man, and her complexion greatly changed as her words fell silent. The black-clothed man had an outstanding appearance that was incomparably handsome. Only, both his pupils were a vivid blood red, which lent him a somewhat savage appearance. He looked at Mo Qian Zhu and lightly smiled, Saintus, your highness, we meet again. Mo Qian Zhu was eminently calm and resolute. Although she'd expected her enemies to be pursuing her, she hadn't expected that they'd catch up so quickly. The man continued, Saintus, your highness, I apologize for the events having come this far. It's truly regrettable that your verdant feather holy lands were destroyed. As for that, I had no choice, as I was helplessly forced to do so. For existences such as you and I, with our cultivations, there's nothing in this world that is beyond our reach. The only thing that you and I desire is to reach the pinnacle of power, and to be eternal existences. I would like to request Saintus to kindly hand over the divine magic cube. We can cultivate together, and study the secrets of the magic cube until the end of time. How about it? Mo Qian Zhu began to revolve the supernatural divine power within herself. She coldly said, Cease with your meaningless words. Qian Mingzi, you may have destroyed my verdant feather holy lands, but if you want to kill me, then you'll have to pay dearly. Is that so? Then I'll have to give it a try. The man called Qian Mingzi seemed disinterested. He casually waved his right hand, and an ancient-looking pagoda appeared in his palm. This was the catastrophic spirit treasure, the God Sealing Pagoda. It was capable of sealing gods and binding demons, as well as being a vessel that could hold tens of thousands of warriors. Just half a month ago, this man had used this god-sealing pagoda to transport over 10,000 powerhouses from the realm of the gods, 
and had suddenly appeared within the verdant feather holy lands, leading to its ultimate destruction. Tian Mingzi threw the god ceiling pagoda into the air. Golden light sparkled outwards, and ten thousand powerhouses appeared in the world of snow. The entire sky was completely covered with ominous shadows. Over ten thousand people stood in the void, casually staring with indifference at the two women that were isolated and helpless within the endless expanse of ice. Mo Qian Zhu saw this, and the corners of her lips panned upwards in a condescending sneer. She had been waiting for this moment. Netherworld Holy Land, Primordial Universe Holy Land, Ancient Laguna Palace, Crimson Blood Demon Island. Since you plotted together to destroy my verdant feather holy land, then today, even at the cost of my own soul, I'll bury you all here. Tian Mingzi said, Mo Qian Zhu, I respect you, and admire your strength and talent that defies the will of the heavens. But now, you've been seriously wounded. In the face of these ten thousand powerhouses from the realm of the gods, you've no chance of winning. I will leave you one path. Surrender the divine crystal magic cube here, and I will let you and your sister leave alive. Mo Qian Zhu ignored him. Her mind stirred, and a one-inch gray cube slowly appeared in her hand. The gray cube was entirely covered with black inscriptions. This was the object that had caused such turmoil throughout the entire realm of the gods, the divine crystal magic cube. Mo Qian Zhu poured all of her supernatural divine power into the divine crystal magic cube. Although she'd been in possession of the divine crystal magic cube for less than a year, she'd still been able to perceive some of the esoteric secrets contained within. Perhaps the legends were true, and this was a crystallized soul left behind by a fabled true god that had fallen from the heavens. It had the terrifying power to crush the soul of any existence. However, with Mo Qian Zhu's power, she was still unable to control this power. If she tried to, even her own soul would be devoured by this divine crystal magic cube. You air, don't resist, big sister. The young girl didn't know what Mo Qian Zhu was planning on doing, but at this moment, her entire body became covered in a layer of light. This light broke through the void, and sent her away. First, Mo Qian Zhu had to send off her own little sister. This was because once the forbidden power of the magic cube began, every single soul around would be sucked in, and shattered apart. This was also the reason that she hadn't used this forbidden power within the verdant feather holy lands. Ha ha, you want to send off your little sister? How could I let you do as you please? Qian Mingzi's hands twisted together, forming countless seals that would freeze the void within a ten-mile radius. But at this moment, his expression changed. A terrifying power seemed to be condensing within the divine crystal magic cube in Mo Qian Zhu's palm, causing him to feel a soul-trembling fear from the core of his very being. This is. Qian Mingzi's heart raced, and his seal-forming patterns changed. He sensed a life or death crisis heading towards him. Heaven Earth Yuan Qi went wild in that instant. A massive vortex of energy appeared above the divine crystal magic cube. With my soul as a guide, let me borrow the power of a true god, soul extinction. Mo Qian Zhu calmly and coldly spoke these words. In the next moment, her body was transformed into dazzling specks of starlight. Her soul and consciousness were turned into streams of light that were completely absorbed into the divine crystal magic cube. Seeing this, Tian Mingzi's expression changed. Without any hesitation, he hastily ripped open the space around him, attempting to escape. But at this moment, the terrifying energies within the divine crystal magic cube erupted outwards. It was as if a star itself had exploded, and all of the space around was like a thin slip of paper that was being torn apart. The ten thousand powerhouses of the realm of the gods had just arrived in this snowy world, only to come face to face with a life or death crisis. Those that had the ability to pass through worlds tried to escape through the endless void. But it was too late. All of the surrounding space was instantly dismantled, and the resulting massive storm sucked them all in like scraps of paper. Their bodies were turned into dust that vanished, and their souls were shattered into fragments within that storm, before being absorbed into the magic cube. An enormous swath of space of the snowfall realm had been twisted into an utter dead zone. This zone was flooded with space storms that were capable of destroying anything and everything. As for the divine crystal magic cube, it swallowed all of the soul fragments, before it was sucked into these space storms, and thrown into the endless void. Chapter 1. Lin Ming. Within the Sky Fortune City, the capital of Sky Fortune Kingdom, 
the Seven Profound Martial House stands before the Great Mountain Zhou. Seven Profound Martial House, it is the martial house set up by the Seven Profound Valley, a martial arts clan with over 600 years of heritage. It is also the only martial house set up by them in the Sky Fortune Kingdom. As one of the biggest martial house, Seven Profound Martial House possesses a great number of legacy martial skills and martial masters as its tutors. It was only natural that it would become the holy land of the many young aspiring martial artists. Correspondingly, the entrance qualifications for new recruits in Seven Profound Martial House were set at a high threshold. It would not be an exaggeration to say that only one in a million would be able to qualify. Under the scorching heat of summer, a teenage boy stood within a forest of the Great Mountain Zhou. Both his fists were wrapped up with strips of cloth as he stood bare-chested before a rough-looking big tree. He threw punch after punch, striking heavily against the tree trunk. Peng, peng, heavy sounds echoed out around the forest. The layer of bark on the big tree that was struck had sunk downwards noticeably, exposing its grayish wooden texture. On its surface, traces of blood could be seen. This teenager's name is Lin Ming. He possesses a grade 3 martial talent. In Sky Fortune Kingdom, half of its citizens have no martial talent to speak of and are unsuitable towards the path of martial arts. As for the other half, at least 80% of them have a grade 1 martial talent. Even if these people were to practice martial arts, they would not be able to reach anywhere. 1 in 10 of the remaining people have a 90% chance of having grade 2 martial talent. If these people were to be diligent in their practice of martial arts, they have a chance to accomplish something in life. However, becoming a master of the martial arts would be near hopeless for them. Lin Ming's grade 3 martial talent could be considered as a high-class existence. If one were to be boastful, one could claim that he is the cream of the crop. However, even with his martial talent, it would still be difficult for him to enter the seven profound martial house. Lin Ming was well aware of this. Together with his female childhood friend, the beautiful Lan Yunyu who also has a grade 3 martial talent, they had agreed to take the entrance assessment for the Sky Fortune Martial House, even though it is nowhere near as good as the Seven Profound Martial House. The Sky Fortune Martial House is part of Sky Fortune Kingdom. Since the day of its inception, it has only 80 years worth of martial skills, legacy and foundation, a limited number indeed. Legacy martial skills are something of great importance to martial artists. Without a good set of martial skills, the goal of completing the final physical training stage, the pulse condensing stage or higher would be near impossible. The pulse condensing stage is a realm that most martial artists vied for. It is also the first turning point for cultivators of the martial way. Once the pulse condensing stage is successfully attained, a martial artist's lifespan would be greatly increased. Additionally, they would also be granted the title of nobility, allowing them to live a life of prosperity, bringing a blessing to their descendants. It is in this pulse condensing stage training that the Sky Fortune Martial House falls greatly behind the Seven Profound Martial House. Lin Ming's heart pulsed for the sake of the martial way. It was only natural that he too, desired to enter the Seven Profound Martial House. If his talent was insufficient, then he could only rely on his own diligence and perseverance to impress the examiners. However, the prospect of him entering was very low. Moreover, once he failed, he would have to waste half a year's time to wait for another opportunity. For martial artists, this amount of time is highly precious. Placing all this into consideration, in addition to the fact that he had promised Lan Yunyu, Lin Ming decided instead to enter the Sky Fortune Martial House. Lin Ming and Lan Yunyu had trained and played together for many years. Even though the both of them were still young and the topic of marriage never came up, those emotions have already begun budding. Lin Ming's parents on the other hand, had shown their approval and love towards Lan Yunyu. They would always invite Lan Yunyu to their house for dinner. A mutual feeling of goodwill existed between Lin Ming and Lan Yunyu, leaving only a thin piece of paper between the two. Once they grow slightly older, this piece of paper would certainly be torn apart. Lin Ming viewed the agreement between them both seriously. He had determined to charge towards the pulse condensing stage even if he could only train within the Sky Fortune Martial House. However, on the day that Sky Fortune Martial House held its entrance assessment, Lan Yunyu failed to show up. At first, Lin Ming had assumed that Lan Yunyu was unable to arrive due to some matters. It was only later that he learnt of Lan Yunyu entering the Seven Profound Martial House. Additionally, 
The one who had ensured her success in becoming a disciple of Seven Profound Martial House was Zhu Yan, the genius young master of Green Mulberry City's number one family. Although Lin Ming was only 15 years old, he had accompanied his parents to do battle on the outside before. Thus, he has a greater level of maturity compared to others. He understood the meaning behind Zhu Yan's act of ensuring that the Seven Profound Martial House accepted Lan Yunyu. For a great family such as the Zhu family, their prerequisite in selecting future wives lied not in terms of appearances, but rather their martial talent. A highly talented wife would have a higher chance of giving birth to a martial genius. Although Lan Yunyu's family is only average, her grade 3 martial talent is very good considering her gender. In addition, Lan Yunyu herself is a beauty with an outstanding temperament. It was only natural that Zhu Yan would fall for her. For Lan Yunyu, the difference between the Sky Fortune Martial House and Seven Profound Martial House is simply too great. The opportunities, honor, glory, and potential accomplishments that both could able to provide are simply incomparable. This is especially true regarding the extension of life that could be gained after one successfully reaches the pulse condensing stage. Such a kind of temptation is simply irresistible for girls. Faced with such appealing prospects, most females would have chosen to go with Zhu Yan as well. After all, Zhu Yan himself possesses handsome features, his family background and future are both far better compared to Lin Ming's. Although he was able to understand, to say that this matter did not greatly affect Lin Ming would be a lie. He shut himself within his room for three days. After that, he walked out and proceeded to eat, sleep and train. Moreover, the intensity of his training had become much higher than before. Before Lan Yunyu had left him, Lin Ming had already made the decision to break through into the pulse condensing stage and pursue an even higher realm of martial cultivation. The current Lin Ming was no different. If he still had any doubts before, then Lan Yunyu's act of leaving him had hardened his resolve towards the martial way. He made the decision to enter the entrance assessment for the Seven Profound Martial House, no matter how difficult the process may be. Peng, peng. The heavy sounds of fists striking against the tree trunk echoed continuously throughout the forest. The name of this tree is Iron Tree. Not only does it possess an extremely tough layer of bark, it also has strong regenerative properties. Many beginners of the martial way would choose this iron tree to train themselves. After throwing out who knew how many punches, Lin Ming finally exhausted himself. Leaning upon a tree trunk, he sat down on a piece of rock and removed some herbs from a backpack placed on the ground. He smeared them onto the surface of his fists and kneaded. For those who pursue martial arts, frequent usage of body treatment herbs is necessary. Not doing so would cause internal injuries to build up. Once these internal injuries accumulate, there is a possibility of becoming a cripple, or even death. This herb is called iron thread grass. It was given this name because the green juice produced from squeezing iron thread grass could help heal wounds, but would cause a terribly painful sensation akin to having iron threads brushing upon the wounds. Lin Ming gritted his teeth as he endured the pain. He retrieved a white cloth from within the backpack and rolled it around his fists, bandaging it. Truth be told, there were many other herbs that are more effective compared to the iron thread grass. These herbs also has a milder side effect, but comes at a much higher price. Lin Ming's circumstances made it impossible for him to afford such herbs. Lin Ming's parents run a restaurant within Green Mulberry City. However, this restaurant does not belong to them. It actually belonged to the Lin family of Green Mulberry City. Although Lin Ming's maiden name is also Lin, his family line had been separated from the Lin family by several generations. The Lin family placed some of their less important assets into the hands of their distant relatives for management. Lin Ming's parents' livelihood were dependent on their management of this restaurant. Every year they would be given a fixed amount of income and some commission. This money was naturally enough for them to subsist on. However, it would be a stretch to use it to fund Lin Ming's pursuit of martial arts. Lin Ming's parents had originally wanted Lin Ming to continue the family business and become a treasurer for the restaurant. However, seeing Lin Ming's ardent devotion towards the martial way, they instead chose to take out all their savings for Lin Ming to purchase healing herbs. Since then, Lin Ming's family savings had decreased bit by bit. But Lin Ming on the other hand had remained at the first stage of physical training. The physical training stage is the first realm for those who pursue the martial way. It involves the primal tempering of their bodies and is separated into six stages. 
The first stage is strength training, second is flesh training, third is viscera training, fourth is altering muscle, fifth is bone forging and sixth is pulse condensing. After that, one would be able to step into the primal assemblage stage. After applying the iron thread grass juice onto his wounds, Lin Ming rested for half a long hour to allow his wounds to absorb the medicinal properties of the herb. He then straightened himself and was about to continue training his fists when a fat youngster walked into view. This fat youngster was carrying a long sword with him. Seeing Lin Ming, he grinned and spoke. Brother Lin, today is the registration day for the entrance assessment of the Seven Profound Martial House. Could it be that you have forgotten about it? Why are you still practicing your fists here? This youngster's name is Lin Xiodong. He is slightly younger than Lin Ming. Growing up together, the two of them have a very strong bond of brotherhood. Lin Xiodong is a direct descendant of the Lin family. However, even for direct descendants, there exists a form of ranking. As it happens, Lin Xiodong is part of the lowest ranked ones. As for Lin Xiaodong's parents, they too were engaged in business and have a close relationship with Lin Ming's parents. After seeing Lin Xiodong, Lin Ming turned his attention back to the tree trunk and said, The beginning part of the registration will have too many people. The queue would take up to one or two long hours. Going there now would be a waste of time. Damn it, you won't even let go of this small amount of time. Do you really have to go that far? Lin Xiodong spoke out in exaggeration and walked up to the tree trunk. Observing the indentations caused by the fists and the traces of blood, he turned to see Lin Ming's bandaged fists. He then let out a sigh of disappointment. You really are crazy, to be able to damage iron wood to such an extent. However, with your current training methods, iron thread grass alone won't be enough. If you keep this up, your hands would become crippled. Lin Ming did not say anything. The martial way is a constant struggle against heaven. Considering his grade 3 martial talent, attaining the sixth stage of pulse condensation was incredibly hard. If he does not give it his all while he was still young, then he would have no hope at achieving his goal. Once he had given his all, there would certainly be the possibility of him becoming a cripple due to the accumulation of internal injuries. However, there was also the possibility of him attaining success before that happens. And once he could successfully enter the pulse condensation stage, he could attain true primal tempering of the body and the internal injuries would vanish. For Lin Ming, this was a battle with his back against the raging river. This was also a gamble with his life on the line. Lin Xiodong gave a sigh and pulled out a bundle from his bosom. He unfurled the bundle layer by layer and said, Brother Ming, take this. Lin Ming turned around and was shocked to find a bloody crimson-colored ginseng lying upon the cloth bundle. Judging from its appearance, this strain of blood ginseng is at least a hundred years old. It is a high-grade medicine used for mending wounds and nourishing blood. A thin slice is enough for each use. In addition, the powerful healing properties of this blood ginseng are very gentle. This blood ginseng should be worth at least 150 gold liangs, the equivalent of Lin Ming's family's annual income. Lin Ming's body paused, and he shook his head. I cannot accept this blood ginseng. Even though they are close brothers, this blood ginseng is simply too expensive. Lin Xiaodong's position within the Lin family is very low. Even though his family situation is much better when compared to Lin Ming's, it would still be far from comfortable if their income were used to supplement Lin Xiaodong's martial training. Lin Xiaodong forcibly pushed the blood ginseng onto Lin Ming and said, I bought this blood ginseng for you. You know how I train, I fish every three days and dry the fishing nets every two days. My body's injuries are no more than a fart's worth. Using this would be a waste. If you refuse then I would have bought this for nothing. I do not have much ambitions in life. I just want to continue holding on to my position as a direct descendant of the Lin family. As long as I do not end up losing this position and my next generation could also successfully maintain their place in the Lin family, that is enough for me. Lin Ming stayed silent for a moment before keeping the blood ginseng. He then spoke out, Very well, I will accept this blood ginseng. For the sake of this ginseng, I must break through to the pulse condensation stage. Ha ha, now that is more like it. Not only should you break through into the pulse condensation stage, you must also turn that son of a bitch, Zhu Yan upside down. That bastard has been an eyesore for a long time. Zhu Yan Ha, Lin Ming sighed lightly. Zhu Yan had already been admitted into the Seven Profound Martial House. In addition, 
Zhu Yan is currently one of the high-ranked disciples within the inner heavenly abode, his strength having reached the pinnacle of the third stage of physical training. Even so, Lin Ming had set defeating Zhu Yan as his objective. This decision was not due to Lan Yunyu, but rather due to his pursuit of the martial way. This path required him breaking through one threshold after another, conquering one mountain after another. As for Zhu Yan, he has the honorable spot of being the number one to be conquered. At the foot of the great mountain Zhou lied a stretch of buildings extending up to 20 li in length. This is the area of operations for the Seven Profound Martial House and the Sky Fortune Martial House and today is the day of registration for those who wishes to take the Seven Profound Martial House's entrance assessment. A crowd was gathered on the field before the Seven Profound Martial House. Even though Lin Ming and Lin Xiodong had deliberately chosen to arrive late, they came to realize that they had underestimated the number of applicants. The applicants were all lined up in three lines, with each line extending up to several meters in length. Judging by the current queue, half a long hour would be needed before registration could be completed. We will have to wait. Lin Xiodong gave a sigh and stood helplessly in line. N. Lin Ming nodded his head. Hey, there are very few people there. Lin Xiodong pointed towards a small gate nearby. There were only a few people there. Furthermore, the ground was also paved with red carpet. That place is reserved for nobles. Lin Ming noticed the writings on the sign. Since the Seven Profound Martial House was built upon the grounds, buildings and resources of Sky Fortune Kingdom, it was only natural for them to give some face to the elite classes of the kingdom. In fact, many of the Martial House's affairs would be handed over to the elites to manage. One such example would be today's registration for entrance assessment. Damn it, Lin Xiodong muttered in discontent. Nobility was something that only the imperial family could grant and could be inherited. Even though the Lin family is a wealthy family, it is not a noble family. Lin Xiodong was cursing off at the nobles while consoling himself when the doors of the gate opened. Two young males strode out from the gate. One of them was wearing blue clothes with a long sword attached to his waist. His hair was tied up into a gold-colored headgear and had a handsome appearance. Seeing the appearance of this man caused Lin Ming to frown. This was none other than Zhu Yan. The Zhu family's daughter had married into the imperial family and had become the eldest prince's favored concubine. With the eldest prince's position in the royal family, the Zhu family soared to become the number one family within Green Mulberry City. Moreover, they were also granted the rank of nobility thus allowing Zhu Yan to ensure Lan Yunyu's admittance into the Seven Profound Martial House. Damn, we end up meeting a detestable person, Lin Xiodong muttered unhappily. Zhu Yan was walking side by side with the other young man. A few other nobles waiting outside, then chose to follow the two of them. It would appear that Zhu Yan was bringing the other young man to register. The two of them continued walking forward. At this rate, it was inevitable that Lin Ming and Zhu Yan bump into one another. With his current position and strength, it was possible that he would end up suffering badly if they were to bump into one another. But, Lin Ming chose not to run and instead looked forward in a calm manner as Zhu Yan approached. Zhu Yan's pace was disrupted after catching sight of Lin Ming and Lin Xiodong. His first reaction was that of shock. After that, he frowned. Seeing Lin Ming made him feel uncomfortable. Although he had snatched away Lan Yunyu, she had refused to engage in any acts of intimacy before their wedding. Clearly, Lin Ming still exists within Lan Yunyu's heart, not to mention her feelings of guilt. The only reason she had chosen Zhu Yan was due to the Seven Profound Martial House. As a man, Zhu Yan was unable to tolerate the fact that his future wife's heart remained within the palms of another man. You are called Lin Ming, am I right? How unexpected, you would actually follow us all the way here. You, with a mere cultivation level of first stage in physical training want to take the test to enter the Seven Profound Martial House. The meaning behind Zhu Yan's words was obvious. He would never allow Lin Ming to enter the Seven Profound Martial House. Even though Lin Ming's strength was of no threat to him, Lin Ming's existence within the Seven Profound Martial House would make it impossible for Lan Yunyu to forget Lin Ming. Whether or not I manage to pass the assessment is my own problem. I am not here as a result of following anyone. I am here due to my pursuit of the martial way. The martial way, a mere above average talent like you dared to utter the words of pursuing the martial way. Insolence. Having said that, Zhu Yan's finger released a light sound. After that, 
His long sword shot out from its sheath. Zhu Yan grasped onto the sword and slashed the air, releasing an intense sword key, which created an air-splitting sound. A barely visible wave flew outwards, directly cutting down half the canopy of a nearby tree. The sounds of Pu Su Su could be heard as a large number of branches and leaves fell to the ground. The people around all stared with bulging eyes. Most of them were of roughly the same age as Zhu Yan and were not that much younger. However, Zhu Yan's accomplishment in the martial way had already left them far behind. The reason Zhu Yan unleashed this sword slash was to give Lin Ming a mental blow, and show him the gap between the two of them. I am a grade 4 martial talent. I began training in martial arts since I was 12, consuming countless medicinal pills in the process and have now entered the heavenly abode sword sect within the seven profound martial house. I am currently at the pinnacle of the third stage of physical training. Even so, I am barely at the beginning stage of the martial way. And yet, someone like you with a mere first stage in physical training dared to talk about the martial way. Zhu Yan's manner of speech was so arrogant, it caused Lin Xiodong to become enraged. Surnamed Zhu, you are simply someone born two years earlier than us. What are you boasting about? If our age were reversed, this senior would use just one hand to toss you away. Zhu Yan frowned and turned to look at Lin Xiodong. He took a step forward, the primal energies within his body exploded outwards as he asked. Who are you? I, due to the oppressive pressure sent out by Zhu Yan, Lin Xiaodong's words were stuck in his throat. He took a step backwards, swallowed his own saliva and patted his chest before speaking. This young master is called Lin Xiodong, you better remember it. Lin Xiodong, Heng, those from the Lin family that has the qualifications to talk with me can be counted with one hand. What makes you think that a clown like you have the qualifications to speak to me? That includes, even you, Lin Ming. If not for Lan Yunyu, you have no qualifications to talk to me at all. I will give you this advice, a man must know his own limits. Someone like Lan Yunyu is not someone that you could match up to. A female with grade 3 martial talent with good looks and bearing is rare within Green Mulberry City. Most of them would only appear in great families. However, Considering the conflicts of interest between the great families, they would never allow their talented females to be married off into other families, leading to the strengthening of their rival's bloodline. Thus, most great families would request that the male side marry into their family. This is the reason why Zhu Yan had said that. A thousand gold liangs. From today onwards, I do not want to see you face again. Zhu Yan said as he pulled out a stack of gold bills from his sleeves. The people around were rendered speechless. A thousand gold liangs is a very high sum of money, enough for a martial artist in the physical training stage to buy up necessary high-grade herbs for training usage for up to three years. A thousand gold liangs. Do you take us for beggars? Lin Xiodong pushed back the stack of gold bills. Truth be told, he was simply putting on a brave facade. Even for him, a thousand gold liangs is a huge sum of wealth. Zhu Yan flicked his hands and a powerful repelling force knocked Lin Xiodong away. Zhu Yan coldly stared at Lin Ming, awaiting his answer. Lin Ming took a deep breath before speaking out in a slow yet powerful tone. Zhu Yan, I am not your match in terms of talent, I am even lesser in terms of family support. However, the cultivation of martial arts does not depend only on talent and financial support. There is an even more important factor. The heart of a martial artist. Your cultivation of martial arts is done for the sake of wealth, status and vanity. However, my cultivation of martial arts is done for the sake of pursuing the martial way. The martial way does not exist for those with talent, it does not exist for those with authority and it does not exist for those with money. It exists for those whose heart beats for the sake of martial arts. There will come a day when I will surpass you. As he reached the end of his sentence, Lin Ming spoke out each word with emphasis and in a clear voice. Everyone who was standing nearby could clearly make out what he had said. A grade 3 talent wanted to chase after a grade 4 talent. In addition, there was an enormous gap in terms of background between them both. This brat has gone mad. Hearing Lin Ming's words, Zhu Yan became momentarily stunned before laughing out. Good, very good indeed. I will be waiting for you. After saying that, Zhu Yan kept the stack of gold bills. With a weng sound, the long sword returned to its sheath. Zhu Yan then gave Lin Ming a long look before turning away. Chapter 2 
peculiar stone. Brother Ming, you were truly domineering back then. Lin Xiodong said with gusto as they walked down the road. Lin Ming remained quiet. The things that he had said back then had sounded grand and impressive. However, it would be extremely difficult for him to surpass Zhu Yan. The amount of effort that he would be required to pay would be colossal. He has no fear of hard work or bitterness. But the same could not be said for internal injuries. Medicinal herbs were needed to heal those injuries and those medicines were undoubtedly expensive. Lin Xiodong was able to guess what Lin Ming was thinking and said. Brother Ming, all you need to do is train hard. As for the financial side of things, I will figure it out for you. Just be rest assured, even though my grandfather's position in the family is not high, it is still nothing to scoff at. Taking out a few hundred gold liangs is not impossible for me. Lin Ming stopped walking and turned around to face Lin Xiodong. In life, there are many fair weather friends, but those who would offer help in times of need are rare. Between brothers, saying thanks would be hypocritical. Yet, Lin Ming still stopped and said in a serious tone. Xiodong, thank you, enough, stop this. This is too much for me. I am not someone who pursues much in life. Taking the entrance assessment for the seven profound martial house is simply a way to protect my father's reputation. Brother Ming, I will bet on you. After you become a master in the future, you must help cover my ass a bit. Ha ha ha. Lin Ming gave a hearty smile and laughed. N, with a brother like you, I will definitely persevere onwards onto the martial way. By the time Lin Ming returned to his dwelling place, it was already evening. This room was one that he had rented. During this period of time, from the day that Seven Profound Martial House began its registration for entrance assessment until the day of its assessment, all the dwelling places within Sky Fortune City would be packed and inns full. The rental rates would undoubtedly increase by half. Thus, many applicants would choose to rent a room. Naturally, that in itself was not a cheap option. Lin Ming had rented a single room of only 10 square meters in area with a very simple setup. Just as he was about to begin his meditation upon the bed, someone knocked on the door. Lin Ming opened the door to see the landlady standing there. The landlady is a roughly 50 years old woman with a somewhat obese body. The landlady's face was usually fierce and harsh, but today she was sporting a pleasant looking smile, causing Lin Ming to feel that something was off. Landlady, is there anything? This, little fellow, I am sorry, but can you please vacate this room? N, Lin Ming frowned. Why, he he, sorry, but I have rented this room, a harsh sounding male voice interrupted. Lin Ming turned around and found a man with huge monkey-like ears walking in from the hallway. The man was smiling in a seemingly playful manner. Looking at him for a moment, Lin Ming recognized him as one of the underlings that had followed along behind Zhu Yan and the other young man. It appeared that he is the underling of the other young man. Back then, the other young man had remained silent and only looked at Lin Ming and Lin Xiodong with an expression of contempt. No doubt, the young man was currently trying to get in the good books of Zhu Yan by sending his own underling to cause problems for Lin Ming. All he needed to do was offer a rental fee several times higher than what he had and the landlady would naturally be willing to force him out. Presently, the Seven Profound Martial House is holding its registration event, leading to difficulty in searching for a dwelling place. Finding another place to rent was easier said than done. But even if he did, there was no guarantee that this underling would not appear to cause problems for him again. Lin Ming's face turned heavy and he gazed coldly at the landlady. Back then we had agreed that I will be renting for five months. I have also paid you the five months rent in advance. Currently, there is still three more months until the deadline. But, you want me to leave now? The landlady smiled apologetically. This, naturally, I am aware of this. How about this? I will return the rent for the three months back to you. How about that? Ah, return me the three months rent. You have quite the calculative mind. Lin Ming's anger had begun boiling. If this landlady had been forced to evict him due to the pressure of the other person, then Lin Ming would simply have left. However, her current actions and words have made him furious. Hey, what are you talking about? Back then, we had only talked about it and not signed off on anything. This room is mine. Who I choose to rent it to is up to me. Considering Sky Fortune City's status as the capital city of Sky Fortune Kingdom, all the property owners here have a subconscious sense of superiority. To them, all those who came from the outside are but country bumpkins. They would look down upon them while speaking in tones of disdain towards them. 
Furthermore, this man beside her was obviously someone sent by a rich and powerful family. With someone like this backing her up, the landlady became more courageous. At this moment, the man with monkey-like ears laughed out arrogantly. If you are sensible, then just get out immediately. I will tell you something else. This young master has my eyes on you. Even if you manage to find another place to rent, I will still be able to throw you out. Within this three months before the entrance assessment for the seven profound martial house begins, you should just resign yourself to sleeping in the streets, ha ha. The man laughed. For those who were born within the circle of elites, it was only natural for them to form an arrogant sense of superiority. However, even when they were expressing their arrogance, they would still maintain a certain bearing of grace and speech, just like Zhu Yan. This person standing before him on the other hand was revealing a naked form of arrogance, one befitting those of bullies who could only depend on others. Lin Ming stared at the man with monkey-like ears, his eyes turning colder with each passing moment. What are you looking at? Are you thinking about hitting me? Let me tell you, my young master is the second son of the Lord of the Defense Army for Sky Fortune City. If you dare beat this young master, then this young master will. Scram! Lin Ming shouted and threw out a punch, striking the man squarely in this nose. With a ping, the man flew out followed by a series of crashing sounds. After which, the man lied on a pile of debris amidst broken furnitures and pots, his hair disheveled and his face dripping with blood. A fist capable of indenting iron tree struck the man squarely in the face. The result could be imagined, the man's nose had totally sunk inwards. The landlady became shocked. Her eyes bulged out for several moments before suddenly shouted out miserably. Help! Murder! The landlady rushed out, but her fat legs were unable to work properly and she fell on the floor with a plop. Lin Ming stepped towards the man with monkey-like ears. Even though his first stage of physical training was only the beginner territory of the martial way, it was by no means worthless. After all, many people within Sky Fortune Kingdom were unable to train in martial arts. Lin Ming on the other hand was a good talent to begin with. In addition, he was very hard working. Amongst 1,000 peers of the same talent, it may be difficult to find even one with the same level of strength as him. As for this man, he was simply an underling and did not take much effort for Lin Ming to deal with him. The man kept moaning, he had never imagined that Lin Ming would actually beat him. He raised a blood-stained finger and pointed at Lin Ming. You, you dare hit me, you, you are finished. I do not know what would happen to me, but I do know that you are finished. Lin Ming delivered a kick at the man's abdomen, causing him to cry out miserably. Once again, he flew out. Only this time, he broke through the door and ended up being kicked all the way outside the house. Lin Ming did not say anything. He returned to his room and packed up his belongings and began to leave. The entire house had been reduced to a state of mess, causing blood to drip out of the landlady's heart. She timidly said, You, you cannot leave like that, you, must, must compensate. Lin Ming stopped walking, he turned around to face the landlady who was slumped on the floor like a human meatball. He asked, compensate, compensate, compensate. The landlady's voice began losing its strength. She felt as though the gaze of the young man before her was just like a window into the nine infernal abysses, causing her to shudder. Without saying anything, Lin Ming punched the walls, his fist penetrating through the brick walls of the house, causing the entire house to shudder and dust to fall off the ceiling. The landlady screamed out and fainted. Lin Ming carried his luggage and walked out of the house without even glancing at the fainted man. Lin Ming was well aware that after beating up this man, the person behind him would never let this go and would certainly bring upon Lin Ming no small amount of trouble. However, Lin Ming had no regrets. As a man, there was a need to endure. If the person who had come today was a martial artist, Lin Ming would not have acted as he did and would have chosen to endure. This loss was one that must be endured. However, the one who appeared before him was a worthless underling, one who could only depend on the backing of his master. If Lin Ming had to endure what this kind of person had to say, then what was the point of him learning martial arts? That was simply incompatible with the martial way within Lin Ming's heart. Thus, Lin Ming left the neighborhood. After a while, he put down his backpack and started considering how to solve his dwelling problem. As of now, all the inns were full. In addition, the prices were also far too expensive for him. Even though he has no objections to sleeping in the wilds, Lin Xiodong would probably throw a fuss and insist on bringing him to his own abode. 
If Lin Ming were to do so and the second son of the army lord sends his men there, Lin Xiodong himself can forget about sleeping in his house. He will have to accompany Lin Ming and sleep on the streets. Moreover, Lin Ming had just provoked a dangerous trouble. There was no guarantee that the army lord's second son would not send some thugs over. In these people's eyes, causing others to become crippled was no big matter. Lin Ming did not want to bring such a kind of problem to Lin Xiodong. If that is the case, then where could I go? After contemplating about it, Lin Ming finally thought of a place, the most luxurious dining establishment in Sky Fortune City, Grand Clarity Pavilion. The Grand Clarity Pavilion's consumer base are all of the highest class. In addition, they themselves possess a strong background. With such a strong base of power, a mere second son of an army lord could know nothing against it. The reason Lin Ming wanted to go to Grand Clarity Pavilion was obviously not to spend money to rent a place. He was headed there to find work. Lin Ming's parents operate a restaurant. It was a given that Lin Ming would be able to cook. The taste of his cooking was quite good as well. However, he was not conceited enough to think that he could compete with those cooks in Sky Fortune City. After all, his forte did not lie in the area of cooking. Grand Clarity Pavilion remained brightly lit even as Lin Ming arrived. It is the establishment with the best business in Sky Fortune City. Lin Ming's clothes were too ordinary, causing all who saw him entering the establishment to look at him with a strange expression. A person with such a kind of clothes would usually be unable to eat within this Grand Clarity Pavilion. Furthermore, there was also the fact that Lin Ming is only a 15-year-old teenager. However, the waiter maintained a favorable manner as he walked over and asked, Little brother, are you here with your parents? Lin Ming shook his head and replied, I am here for a job. Hearing that, the waiter frowned. What kind of job could a mere 15-year-old kid do? Here, waiting requires beauties who are at least 18 years old or handsome males who are at least 20 years old. As for cooking, what kind of cooking could a 15-year-old kid produce? Go away. Don't cause a disturbance here. The waiter waved his hand impatiently. I can really work. Just let me into the kitchen to try. The waiter asked in an unhappy voice. What can you do? Lin Ming smiled and replied. Deboning. What? The waiter became stunned. Deboning is a biased line of work and not every restaurant would set up such a job. This job requires the meat dresser to cut up the quarry or hunted animals into pieces while removing its bones. A master level meat dresser could cut up a cow with ease and skill. A good meat dresser could also cut up a cow, but would require a change of knife every year. Some meat dressers even need to change their knives once a month. In addition, the efficiency involved was low and they would need half a day to cut up a cow. As for Grand Clarity Pavilion, their ingredients are not cow meat but ferocious beasts meat. The meat of ferocious beasts is delicious but their scales, skin, bones and tendons are exceptionally tough. Ordinary people would have to struggle to great lengths just to cut out a small part of it. Martial arts masters on the other hand would not be willing to lower themselves to do such a kind of job. Even if they were willing, someone who does not understand how the muscles, bone and tendons come together would not be able to do it. Using pure strength alone in the cutting up process would cause it to lose its delicious taste. Deboning was how Lin Ming had first come into contact with the martial way. Within his parents' restaurant, he trained himself in the deboning process every day for the past 10 years. It was a very tiring job. Lin Ming had never considered himself a genius in the martial way. All he could depend on was his own hard work, and continue training over and over again. That was how he managed to form his solid martial foundation, by slashing down the knife, slash after slash within the kitchen. The waiter was unable to chase Lin Ming away and could only bring him over to the kitchen. Sister Lan, this little brother wants to apply work as a deboning worker. Deboning worker. Within the Grand Clarity Pavilion kitchen, a beautiful woman in her twenties wearing a gorgeous dress appraised Lin Ming. Observing the plain clothes on his body and the backpack he was carrying which made him appear like a refugee, she frowned. She then spoke in a dissatisfied manner towards the waiter who brought Lin Ming in. What are you doing, bringing just anybody into the kitchen? Dong Zi, give him some silver and send him away. Obviously, this beautiful woman considered Lin Ming as a distressed child. As for the rebuked waiter, his face was bitter. Truthfully, he had tried to push Lin Ming out, but had discovered that Lin Ming's legs seemed to have grown roots and was immovable. A young man had moved over to drive Lin Ming away. 
However, at this moment, he suddenly felt his hands becoming lighter. He stared in confusion as Lin Ming had somehow taken away the boning knife that he was holding. Before the man named Dong Zi could understand what had happened, Lin Ming said. I am not here to beg for money. Sister, it won't be too late for you to drive me away after seeing my craftsmanship. The beautiful woman was slightly surprised. It appeared that this little kid has some experience in the craft. She shot a look at Dong Zi and said, How useless, you cannot even handle a little kid. Go to the storehouse and bring over a pig. After that, she turned to Lin Ming and said, If you can complete it in half a long hour, one hour, then I will allow you to stay in Grand Clarity Pavilion. Dong Zi knew that he had lost face and turned shamefully to go bring the pig over. However, Lin Ming interrupted him. No need, I will do that one. Lin Ming said as he pointed towards a scaled draconic beast. The beautiful woman became surprised. A scaled dronic beast is a level 2 ferocious beast whose body is brimming with muscles. These muscles are extremely tough and could resist even normal sword attacks. However, using certain herbs and simmering it for three days and nights would produce a thick soup with delicious taste. For such a kind of ferocious beast, even a deboning master would have a difficult time cutting it up. This kid is crazy. Are you joking? This scaled draconic beast is worth over a hundred gold liangs. How do you plan to pay us if you end up ruining it? Dong Zi spoke out in discontent. He was still unhappy at Lin Ming for taking away his knife. The beautiful woman gave Dong Zi a glance and snapped. If I let you ruin it, do you think you have what it takes to ruin it? Dong Zi suddenly found himself becoming speechless. The scaled draconic beast is not the same as pigs, cows or sheep. Ordinary people would not be able to break its scales even with a knife. Ruining it was not something that normal people could manage to accomplish. The woman turned to face Lin Ming and said, I will let you cut. Lin Ming nodded his head and picked the best boning knife in the kitchen. He had only cut scaled draconic beasts twice. Both times were during the birthday some important figures in the Lin family. After all, ferocious beasts was not something that an average person could afford to buy. Taking a deep breath, Lin Ming carefully stroked the scales of the scaled draconic beast, feeling the whereabouts of its veins. This process took up the time of an incenser's stick. In his mind, he formed a diagram of the veins. Comparing it with the diagram of his previous scaled draconic beast, he confirmed it to be correct. While waiting, some people became impatient and finally asked, What are you doing? Why aren't you cutting? Stop trying to be mysterious and just cut it. It was only natural that these people would become impatient. A 15-year-old teenager claiming to be able to debone a level 2 ferocious beast, it could only appear to be a prank to them. Lin Ming turned a deaf ear to these questions. He picked up the knife, his eyes becoming extremely focused. For him, the deboning process was the equivalent of a practice session. After having confirmed the diagram of the veins, Lin Ming finally began. He did not use an axe or a slaughtering blade. He only used the hard-to-wield boning knife. In the hands of Lin Ming, this ordinary knife turned into an exceptionally sharp weapon. The knife descended and the scaled draconic beast scales were cut apart. Observing this occurrence, the person who had been asking questions immediately shut his mouth. This feat alone would have required wrist strength of at least 300 jin. For them, the feat of dismembering a scaled draconic beast would normally require either axes or saws. The edge of the knife moved through the gap in the veins, cutting through it smoothly as though he was cutting through paper. Everyone could only hear the sounds of, shua shua, before the scaled draconic beast's white muscles were revealed. Looking at how easily Lin Ming was cutting away, the man called Dong Zi rubbed his eyes. He suspected that there was something wrong with his eyes. Is this little kid really cutting apart a scaled draconic beast? Lin Ming moved gracefully. Occasionally, a few unavoidable tendons would interrupt his work. When that happened, he would use brute strength to pull it out. Thus, he ended up using about less than half a long hour to cut the scaled draconic beast into pieces. Beside the pieces of meat, rows of ribs were laid down in order. These were the most valuable part of the scaled draconic beast. The lengths of these ribs were all consistent, showing almost no loss during work. This scene caused everyone to become astounded. What Lin Ming had done may seem easy, but everyone here knew that the dismembering of a scaled draconic beast is a huge project, requiring around five strong men to work in tandem for around half a day. However, that teenager only has a slightly reddish face after completing the task. 
Judging by his looks, cutting up a few more would not be a problem. As it was already night, the Grand Clarity Pavilion was no longer that busy, allowing many of its kitchen members to quietly watch the scene unfold. Then, Lin Ming placed down the knife and asked, Can I work here now? My working hours must not exceed two long hours and my asking monthly salary is at five gold liangs. One more thing, you need to provide food and accommodation for me. The beautiful woman pondered this for a moment before nodding. Deal. Lin Ming's condition was not low. However, it was worth it. Judging by the speed Lin Ming had shown earlier, many things could be done within two long hours. Most importantly, his work was highly efficient, causing very little loss in key ingredients. Thus, Lin Ming began working for Grand Clarity Pavilion. The two long hours he spent there was not a loss because it was also a form of training for him. Punching tree trunks was a form of training in brute strength, while deboning was a form of precision training. On that very night, Lin Ming remained in the storehouse and cut apart three level one ferocious beasts. After having done so, his entire body was drenched in sweat and his arms were feeling sore. He prepared to cut apart the last one before heading to his lodge to rest. For the last one, he chose another level 2 ferocious beast, Goldback Pangolin. This ferocious beast has teeth that could crush stones and could drill through a mountain as though it was tofu. Due to having consumed too much primal energies earlier, Lin Ming had to exert a great deal of strength in order to cut open the Goldback Pangolin's scaled abdomen. The reason he had chosen this Goldback Pangolin was to force himself to surpass his limits. After cutting open the scales, his work became much easier. The knife edge slid through the gap between the muscles of the goldback pangolin abdomen. However, it was at this moment that Lin Ming felt the knife being blocked. It felt as though the knife had run into something hard. Bones. No, the central abdomen area should not have any bones. If that is not it, then could it be rocks? No, the goldback pangolin may occasionally swallow rocks, but those rocks would have been crushed to smithereens. Even if it were not crushed to smithereens, the powerful acid within its stomach would erode it. Such a big rock could not possibly continue to exist inside, could it be? Inner core. Thinking of this possibility, Lin Ming became excited. An inner core from a level 2 ferocious beast is a valuable item. Even if he does not sell it, he could consume it, bringing a considerable amount of benefit to his body. Lin Ming slipped on a pair of gloves and carefully retrieved the hard item while avoiding the stomach acid. Looking at it, Lin Ming became disappointed. It was a square-shaped object, which meant that it was not an inner core, because inner cores are all spherical in shape. It really does look like a stone, but there is something peculiar about this stone. The grey-coloured cube seemed to have been neatly cut, with precise corners. In addition, the six surface areas of the cube were engraved with black-coloured inscriptions, giving it a mysterious aura. Metal. Lin Ming carefully observed it. It did not seem to be metal, nor does it appear to be stone. Perhaps it is a form of jade. Chapter 3. Soul with no master. Lin Ming washed the stone with some water from the river. After hesitating for a bit, he raised an axe placed on the ground and used its blunt end to lightly strike down on the cube-shaped stone. The stone remained intact without a single scratch on it. This was to be expected. The fact that this stone was able to remain intact after being swallowed by a goldback pangolin was proof of its incredible durability. Lin Ming gradually increased the strength behind his strikes. Eventually, he struck down with all his might resulting in a dent being formed on the axe and the hammering anvil. However, not a single deformity appeared on the cube. Holy crap! Lin Ming was stunned. He had expected the stone to be tough, but he could never have expected it to be this tough. How was this item created? Lin Ming could not come up with an answer. This stone and its shape is too peculiar. Perhaps some refining master created this stone using some highly durable materials. Considering such a possibility, Lin Ming decided to pocket the cube. Even if he could not figure out what it is, he could still use it as a form of decoration. After tidying up the tools, Lin Ming headed towards the room that Grand Clarity Pavilion had prepared for him and proceeded to rest. After practicing his punches, he had engaged in deboning for two long hours. Lin Ming was currently feeling quite tired. After meditating and adjusting his breath for a while, Lin Ming slumped on the bed without taking off his clothes and fell asleep. The bed the Grand Clarity Pavilion had prepared for its staff was very comfortable. In addition, the second son of the army lord could not create any problems for him here. 
Having reached this conclusion, Lin Ming was able to sleep soundly. In his sleep, he had a strange dream. He dreamt of a resplendent palace made of jade. Each pavilion was made of jade, its level of artisanship staggeringly high. Wearing elegant dresses, a group of beautiful and seemingly good-natured beauties shuttled around the palace. Auspicious-looking animals roamed the skies, creating the imagery of a world of immortals. Lin Ming had never seen such a beautiful palace, not even in paintings. At this moment, the scenery suddenly transformed and the resplendent palace collapsed. Countless figures had appeared in the skies above. From amongst the countless figures, streams of light shot out. The streams of light were beautiful to behold. However, when it descended upon the lands, it caused the lands and mountains to be decimated. The lands were split apart while the skies were covered with demonic flames. A huge spell array covering a surface area of hundreds of li appeared out of thin air and multitudinous number of mysterious symbols covered the entire sky. A war on this scale was something that Lin Ming could never have imagined. Masters. These are masters of an unimaginable realm of strength. This level of strength is something that those at the physical training stage and primal assemblage stage could not hope to compete against. Everyone within this imagery are beings that Lin Ming would never have any chance of even glimpsing upon. However, how is it that so many god-like beings would appear here? After that, the scene changed and turned into a world of snow and ice. A frightened-looking woman held onto a one-cubic-inch cube, facing off against ten thousand figures standing on the skies. This woman was actually standing just less than three feet from Lin Ming. Even though he understood that this was all an illusion, Lin Ming was able to feel an extremely powerful yet gentle and holy aura radiating from the woman's body. What surprised Lin Ming most was that the cube that the woman was holding was the stone that Lin Ming had found within the gold-backed pangolin's abdomen. The woman spoke out a series of words, but the words spoken were vague. Lin Ming could only make out two words, magic cube, magic cube. For some unknown reason, once he heard those words, Lin Ming's mind thought of the stone. Could it be that the stone's name is magic cube? Hong, an explosion. The space itself was rent apart. The skies were twisted into a raging whirlpool with seemingly infinite power, sweeping up all of heaven and land. Everywhere it reached, mountains would collapse and skies would crumble. The icy glacier was instantly transformed into nothingness and the ten thousand figures were reduced into dust. Their souls were fragmented and absorbed into the cube. As for Lin Ming, he found himself standing in the middle of the whirlpool, witnessing with his own eyes as everything were absorbed into the whirlpool. Everything around him was reduced to ashes while he himself remained unaffected. This feeling was simply indescribable and would likely be an unforgettable experience for Lin Ming. Lin Ming felt himself drenched in cold sweat. At this moment, he suddenly found that he had arrived at an incredibly large and dark space. Here, various specks of light hovered in suspension, resembling pieces of broken mirror. The various specks were of varying sizes, some big and some small. The bigger ones were as big as a palm, while the smaller ones were only as big as a grain of rice. In the middle of all those specks of light, there was a sphere of light, which emitted a soft glow, a gentle and sacred glow. Inexplicably, Lin Ming felt that the atmosphere around this sphere of light was very similar to that of the woman he had seen earlier. No, it was exactly the same. Could it be that this sphere of light is the form left by that woman? Lin Ming recalled that the woman had turned into a stream of white light and was absorbed into the magic cube right after the explosion happened. A stream of white light. Could it have transformed into this sphere of light? If that were the case, then this would be the space within the magic cube. That would mean that these specks of light. Lin Ming gasped. Could it be that these specks of light were all the fragments of the countless figures that were absorbed by the magic cube after they have been crushed by that spatial storm? Lin Ming was immensely shocked. As of now, he clearly understood that the vivid scene he had just seen were true. Although he had told himself that he was simply dreaming, he was unable to believe that it was just a dream. Everything he had seen in this dream was too realistic and the image of the spatial whirlpool fragmenting the world was deeply engraved into Lin Ming's mind. As a mere ignorant teenager who had yet to achieve the pulse condensation stage, how could he have a dream that involved such a great level of power? Then, all those visions were true. This one stone cube had actually swallowed countless masters whose strength was at a level where he would have no chance of ever laying eyes upon. Lin Ming could not imagine which kingdom could possess such a high number of masters whose strength could suffocate him to such an extent. 
He focused his eyes and peered into the dark space that was littered with countless specks of light. After hesitating for a long period of time, he extended his hand and gently touched a speck of light which was both the smallest and closest to him. Upon contact, the speck of light instantly flowed into Lin Ming's fingertip. Lin Ming had no time to respond at all, as his head felt as though a heavy hammer had suddenly struck down on it viciously. He let out a cry and fell to the ground. Ah! Lin Ming tightly gripped his head. He felt as though there was something desperately invading his mind. The piercing pain caused Lin Ming to wish he could crack open his skull and remove whatever was causing the pain. He could not resist. Lin Ming felt as though he was about to be swallowed up. Swallowed. That is it. This must be the soul fragment's instinctive nature. It is trying to devour my sea of consciousness. Damn you. Realizing this fact, Lin Ming briefly panicked but immediately calmed himself. The thing threatening him was only a small fragment of a soul. In addition, its master had already perished. How could he lose to a minor consciousness that has no master? Lin Ming suddenly shouted out, clenching his fists, his nails digging deep into his flesh and blood, preserve my heart and mind. My heart that beats for the martial way. I have sworn to pursue the extremities of the martial way, how could I allow my road to end here? Lin Ming had no clue on how to get rid of that fragmented consciousness that had no owner. All he could do was grit his teeth and hold on with everything he had. Various disorderly images flowed into his sea of consciousness, causing him to undergo an inhuman amount of pain, threatening to render him unconscious. However, he kept gritting his teeth, maintaining his hold onto the vestiges of his consciousness and holding onto his unwavering martial heart. After who knew how long, this inhuman torture slowly faded. At last, Lin Ming woke up from his dream. He opened his eyes to see that it was already dawn and that he was drenched in cold sweat. His bedsheets were soaked and his palms were dripping with blood from being gripped too tightly. Observing all this, Lin Ming was a hundred percent certain that what had happened was no dream. No nightmare could produce such a kind of effect. He calmly contemplated and could not help but feel scared. A person's soul consists of two parts, an imprinted consciousness and memories. Once the imprinted consciousness is erased, the soul would become ownerless. An ownerless soul could only act on instinct. Back then, the soul he had touched was only at half the size of a rice grain, its light dim. And yet, he had nearly been swallowed up by it, how horrifying. If he had touched an even bigger speck, it was likely that he would have turned into a basket case by now. The cube is too dangerous. As Lin Ming was contemplating about the matter, his face suddenly changed. A. Hey, my sea of consciousness. There are a lot more things inside. Arrays. Inscriptions. Engravings. Various bizarre symbols. Mysterious characters. Plain looking and powerful weapon techniques. What is all this? Could this be the memories carried by the ownerless soul? This thought caused Lin Ming to become startled. He was vaguely aware that this set of memories could prove to be an unimaginable mountain of wealth. Although it had entered Lin Ming's sea of consciousness, the memories were complex. They were not something that Lin Ming could recall as and how he liked. Those memories needed to be further consolidated and integrated. While doing so, Lin Ming ignored the memories regarding arrays and inscriptions. These memories were a little fragmented and disorderly. The memories appeared to be about a profession that engraves inscriptions onto weapons. Lin Ming held no interest towards this profession. There was something else that he needed, something he desired for. He kept searching through his sea of consciousness and finally held his breath, as he found it. Physical training stage formula. Chaotic virtues combat meridians. A legacy skill. What is the reason for the Sky Fortune Martial House to be far below the Seven Profound Martial House? The reason is legacy. Chapter 4. Legacy skill. Sky Fortune Martial House has only 80 years of history. The Seven Profound Martial House on the other hand was founded by the Grade 3 clan, Seven Profound Valley. They possess 600 years worth of heritage and numerous legacy skills. Those who practice the legacy skills from Sky Fortune Martial House have little hope of achieving pulse condensation stage. However, the same cannot be said about the Seven Profound Martial House's legacy skills. As long as one has a Grade 4 martial talent, Breaking through into the pulse condensation stage using seven profound martial houses manuals is not difficult at all. As for Lin Ming, he has not even a decent training manual. All he had was a beginner's martial arts manual. Every day, he would train by punching tree trunks and debone animals. 
This was Lin Ming's martial way. For the past few years, the only thing he could depend on was himself. He explored the aspects of martial arts himself through hard work and carved his way, step by step, until he reached the first stage of physical training. For him, legacies were an important existence. Lin Ming was incomparably excited and he voraciously sorted out the knowledge regarding this legacy skill. Not long after, this, Chaotic Virtues Combat Meridians surprised him yet again. Chaotic Virtues Combat Meridians is a pinnacle level physical training manual from the Divine Domain. However, even though it is of the pinnacle level, it is only about physical training and thus was not that valuable within the Divine Domain. The reason Lin Ming became surprised was because he had finally understood what the Divine Domain is. The Divine Domain is a higher realm that possesses hundreds of millions of years worth of legacies. Physical training, martial arts, swordsmanship techniques, technical skills, arrays, all of it have been developed and honed to the extreme. It is a world reserved for the strongest of the martial way. Their abilities and might are not something that the current Lin Ming could hope to imagine. Thus, this, Chaotic Virtues Combat Meridians is simply invaluable. Additionally, there are even more soul fragments stored within the magic cube. Once his strength had reached the sufficient level, he would be able to incorporate even more of them. Considering all of this, Lin Ming's heart was incredibly excited. Presently, what Lin Ming fear most would be for the skill manual to be incomplete. After all the soul fragment that he had absorbed was only a small speck. It would be an absolute pity if that was the case. Thankfully, as he continued incorporating the Chaotic Virtues Combat Meridians, he saw that it was intact. Everything from strength training, flesh training, viscera training, altering muscle, bone forging and pulse condensation were there. This fact was surprising enough for Lin Ming. In Sky Spill Continent, physical training manuals were generally for one stage only. For example, the Genuine Altering Muscle Channels manual is specifically meant for the altering muscle stage. The Golden Bone Forging Divine Formula manual for bone forging stage the Divine Nine Pulse Skill, manual for the pulse condensation stage and so on. However, this, Chaotic Virtues Combat Meridians is capable of propelling one from the strength training stage to the pulse condensation stage. But what Lin Ming found after this shocked him even more. Within Sky Spill Continent, pulse condensation marks the end of the physical training stage. After which, one will step upon the primal assemblage stage. The primal assemblage stage is divided into post-celestial stage and pre-celestial stage. For most people, pulse condensation is a bottleneck, which they could not break through. These people would be forever stuck in the bone forging stage. Pulse condensation is the limit for the veins within the human body. That is a commonly accepted knowledge. However, according to the Chaotic Virtues Combat Meridians, there exists another stage beyond pulse condensation, tempering marrow. Above the tempering marrow stage, there are actually others. Eight gates of hidden celestial stems. Using the eight trigrams to correspond with the movement of the nine celestial bodies, one could open up eight gates within their bodies. Nine variant Tao Palace. With it, one could break through the limits of the body and reach an even higher level of strength. Regardless of tempering marrow or the eight gates, neither one of them would affect a martial artist when entering the post-celestial or pre-celestial stage. This gives one a far higher degree of martial achievement compared to others. The benefits are self-evident. Realizing this, Lin Ming was rendered speechless from shock. This, Chaotic Virtues Combat Meridians is a timeless treasure. Lin Ming was fervently excited to start practicing. However, before he began, he checked his pocket within his bosom for the magic cube. To his surprise, the cube had disappeared. Lin Ming became fearful and cold sweat started coming out of him. His hand probed around and felt something strange on his chest. He took off his clothes and found a strange symbol on the skin of his left chest. The symbol is exactly the same as the mysterious symbol of the surface of the magic cube. The magic cube entered my body. Lin Ming recalled that the holy woman had summoned out the magic cube from her palm. It was no wonder that she could do that. However, Lin Ming had no clue as to how to summon it. Lin Ming tried to summon the magic cube, but to no avail. Lin Ming felt somewhat disappointed. After all, there were so many soul fragments within the magic cube. Back then, he had only touched the smallest and dimmest of fragment and had such a great harvest. If he could incorporate more of those soul fragments, then the amount of treasure that he could unlock would be simply unimaginable. 
Thinking about that, Lin Ming suddenly gave a self-deprecating smile. He was being ignorant. If the smallest ownerless soul fragment had nearly swallowed his consciousness, then the bigger ones would likely be able to instantly exterminate him. Stop dreaming, Lin Ming. It appeared that the secrets of the magic cube and the knowledge within the soul fragments would have to be left for when his cultivation had reached an even higher level. What he needed to do right now was to practice the chaotic virtues combat meridians as soon as possible. Lin Ming stopped trying to summon the magic cube and began to explore the legacy skill from the divine domain. The essence of chaotic virtues combat meridians is to transform the body into a divine weapon with amazing strength. Additionally, the Chaotic Virtues Combat Meridians also emphasizes on techniques that utilizes strength. Its first layer of strength training is already far different from the norm. Normally, once a person is capable of a force of a thousand jinn, that person would have achieved minor comprehension and could smash an iron tree with a punch. The Chaotic Virtues Combat Meridians, however, requires not only the training of strength, but also the training of precision, the control over the amount of strength used. Once major comprehension is achieved, one would be able to use their palm to turn a tree trunk into fine fibers. Reading this part gave birth to a great sense of longing within Lin Ming. There was no doubt that training this, chaotic virtues combat meridians, would make him far stronger than the average master. Three days later, at the foot of Great Mountain Zhou, with the full moon suspended in the skies, Lin Ming stood upon a plain of grass with his eyes closed. He breathed following a specific rhythm standing there for who knew how long. His entire being was still like a sculpture, illuminated by the moonlight. He was practicing the true primal chaos formula, a special method of circulating true primal energies derived from the chaotic virtues combat meridians manual. This formula is much better at utilizing the true primal energies to temper the body and forge the bones. Once major comprehension of this formula is attained, the resulting strength and durability would be greatly improved to a level surpassing those of the same realm. Under the night's blowing winds, numerous fine grasses came together to form undulating waves which danced about. Lin Ming's breathing seemed to be in accordance with these undulating waves, as though he had become one with the surrounding environment. A drop of dew rolled upon a leaf just above Lin Ming's head. Condensing quietly, it eventually dropped down. Lin Ming who was originally motionless suddenly opened his eyes. He stretched out his right hand, allowing the drop of dew to fall upon his fingertip. The drop of dew rolled down the finger onto his palms. Grasping the drop of dew, Lin Ming's right hand suddenly formed a fist, his shoulder and thigh moved to position, and he threw out a punch. Boom! With a muffled bang, the thick tree trunk before Lin Ming was shaken, traces of a fist appearing amidst the swelling tree dust. Lin Ming exhaled and let go of his fist, allowing the drop of dew to drop down. With a pa -a, sound, it fell upon the grass and was scattered. A smile emerged on Lin Ming's face. When chaotic virtues combat meridians reaches a state of perfection, then the drop of dew would have shot out together without being splintered. Although his current state of comprehension has yet to reach that far, he had still made some success. In addition, the earlier punch had left a fist mark of roughly half a foot in depth upon the iron tree. Three days ago, his punch could at best only leave half an inch. His current achievement was all due to the true primal chaos formula. In these three days, Lin Ming had been practicing this true primal chaos formula non-stop and had finally succeeded in reaching the beginning stage. Truthfully, Lin Ming was only able to train so well thanks to the memories of the senior three. The senior's experience and comprehension had greatly benefited Lin Ming's training. Even the circulating method of the skill had been deeply ingrained into the senior's soul. All Lin Ming needed to do was use his body to recollect them. Due to how crazy his training schedule was, Lin Ming's consumption rate of medicinal herbs was also much faster. He had used up three slices of the blood ginseng. At this rate, the blood ginseng would be used up within less than half a month's time. He now has the solution to training manuals, but still faced the problem of insufficient medicinal herbs. Thus, two days went by and Lin Ming's strength kept growing. The current Lin Ming was able to debone level 1 ferocious beasts effortlessly. For him, even dismembering 5 level 2 ferocious beasts was considered easy. One morning, Lin Xiodong came to the Grand Clarity Pavilion to find Lin Ming. Lin Ming had earlier informed Lin Xiodong that he was working in the Grand Clarity Pavilion, 
although he omitted telling him the reason behind it. The annual martial arts fair, Lin Ming felt shocked, hearing Lin Xiaodong's proposal to go there. That is right, many martial arts masters and nobles will be there. As for the items that will appear there, there are no rare items, only extremely rare items. Lin Ming shrugged and replied, how could we afford those items? As of now, I only have less than 20 gold liangs on me. So what if we cannot buy it? We can just go look around. Just take this as an act of gaining experience. Besides, we will be entering the martial house soon. We must at least buy a good weapon before that. Even if I cannot afford the high-grade weapons, I should be able to get our hands on some middle-grade weapons. Not wanting to disappoint Lin Xiaodong, Lin Ming chose to go out with him. After all, it would be a beneficial experience. As they were headed there, Lin Xiaodong kept talking non-stop about the fair. He was very familiar with the details of the fair, its distance from the seven profound martial house, the areas that are considered suburban and so on. As they were walking down an alleyway, Lin Ming suddenly stopped and placed his hand on Lin Xiaodong's shoulders. What is wrong, brother Ming? Lin Xiaodong asked. Someone is blocking the way. Lin Ming touched his waist where his boning knife was strapped onto. Thanks to his training of the true primal chaos formula, Lin Ming's perception abilities have greatly increased. He could guess who it was. A few days ago, he had beaten the man with monkey-like ears. Now, the man's master has decided to show himself. This moment was something that Lin Ming had been preparing for. Chapter 5. Wager. Just as Lin Ming stopped moving, a slightly sharp voice sounded out in the alley. He he, how unexpected, you have quite a high level of vigilance. You are called Lin Ming, right? A teenager wearing silk clothing slowly walked out from the back of a residence, a contemptuous smile was etched on his face. Behind him, five 18-year-old teenagers followed. Most of them were all at the first stage of physical training, only one of them was at the second stage. As for the teenager with silk clothing, he too was at the second stage of physical training. Observing this situation, Lin Xiaodong suddenly panicked. He had recognized this teenager in silk clothing. He was the one beside Zhu Yan during the seven profound martial house registration incident. Anyone could tell that this bastard was here to cause trouble. They have a total of six people, two at the second stage of physical training and four at the first stage of physical training. As for him and Lin Ming, they were both only at the first stage of physical training. If things were to escalate into a fight, then they would certainly ended up being abused. The teenager in silk clothing must be a young master from one of Sky Fortune City's great families. These people possess both authority and power. While they were not the type to kill indiscriminately, they were certainly capable of crippling others on a regular basis. What are you people trying to do? Lin Xiaodong shouted out, traces of anger evident within his words. You will have to ask him. The teenager in silk clothing pointed towards Lin Ming. You are quite the impressive one, to beat up my underling until he was bleeding all over. Two of his ribs were broken. For these young masters of great families, the lives of their underlings were of no consequence. However, their reputation was another matter. Moreover, the underling had reported that he had already spoken out the teenager in silk clothing's name, but ended up being beaten all the same. This was what caused the teenager in silk clothing to become enraged. You are quite the capable one to claim to one day trample upon me, Wang Yigao. Today, I would like to witness with my own eyes how you plan to do just that. The teenager in silk clothing said, his face turning savage. Lin Ming had never heard of the name Wang Yigao before, nor have he ever said anything about trampling on him. The underling most likely fabricated this in order to provoke Wang Yigao. However, Lin Ming did not feel like explaining himself. No matter what he says, this was bound to end in a fight. The chaotic virtues combat meridians is indeed powerful. However, Lin Ming had only started practicing it for a few days. It would be simply too much to fight off so many people at the same time, especially when two of them are at the second stage of physical training. Not to mention, if Lin Xiaodong were to be taken hostage, then he would be in trouble all the same. Considering the bigger picture, winning here would also bring him trouble. Once matters escalated and he was forced to beat up Wang Yigao, then the next source of trouble would come from Wang Yigo's father. This person is the army lord of Sky Fortune City. Lin Ming highly doubt that such a kind of individual would be interested in sitting down and engaging in a civilized discussion with him. For the current Lin Ming, 
This sort of person is an existence he could not afford to provoke. What a pain in the rear. Lin Ming pondered. Suddenly, a spark lighted up within his mind. He had thought of a way to resolve this problem. Facing Wang Yigao, he spoke. Then, what do you want to do? What do I want to do? Wang Yigao was slightly stunned and instantly laughed out. You actually asked me what do I want to do? The rogues he brought with him all laughed out in unison. In their eyes, Lin Ming was no different from an idiot. For him to be asking them what they wanted to do now was certainly the height of idiocy. After laughing for a good while, Wang Yigao finally stopped and said, I really am uncertain as to whether I should call you an idiotic pig or a pig-like idiot. However, since you came forth with the question, then this young master will give you a chance. Don't you go around saying that this young master is being ruthless. Just get down on your knees and lick my soles clean. After that, break off one of your arm tendons and one leg tendon. If you do that, I will forget about it. Hearing Wang Yigo's conditions, Lin Xiodong became infuriated. Damn it, brother Ming, there is no need for us to talk nonsense with them. Let us fight him to the bitter end. Our green mulberry city's Lin family is no pushover. Let us see if they actually dare do anything. Lin Xiodong knew that they would have to suffer miserably today. All he could do was bring out his family name and hope that the other side would show some fear. Some physical pain was not a problem. But if they ended up being crippled, that would be a huge blow to a martial artist. They may never be able to recover their original body state even with the help of rare herbs. Green Mulberry City's Lin family. Heng, did you think I would be afraid of your Lin family? Lin Ming, are you going to do it yourself? Or do you want me to do it for you? I dare you. Come. Did you think this young master is afraid of you? Lin Xiodong stepped forward, one hand firmly gripping onto his sword hilt. Truth be told, he was currently feeling extremely flustered. However, he just happened to be the type who would rather die than lose face. Lin Ming pulled Lin Xiodong back and spoke to Wang Yigao. So, what you wanted were those things you said earlier. Very well. As long as you can beat me in a martial arts duel, I will accept your conditions. Brother Ming, you. Lin Xiodong became anxious. Even though he believed that Lin Ming would become a highly accomplished person in the future, the current Lin Ming is only at the first stage of physical training. How could he defeat Wang Yigao who is at the second stage of physical training? Lin Xiodong feared that Lin Ming would end up with broken tendons after he loses. Lin Ming said, Do not worry, I know what I am doing. A martial arts duel. You think you are qualified to duel with me? Wang Yigao had never expected Lin Ming to suggest something like this. Within Sky Fortune Kingdom, government officials would not intervene in the fight between martial artists because they simply lack the capacity to do so. Thus, the conflicts between martial artists would end up being settled in a martial arts duel. As long as both sides agree, they would place down the terms of victory and defeat. After the duel, the conflict would be settled between both parties and neither one of them would pursue the other anymore. After all, credibility was something important to martial artists. Considering Wang Yigro's level of strength, which was one stage above Lin Ming, he did not believe that he would lose. He simply felt that the act of engaging in a martial arts duel with Lin Ming was inappropriate. Lin Ming replied, There is no such thing as qualified or not. There is only the question of whether you dare or not. Are you trying to say that I do not dare? That has to be the funniest thing I have heard this year. Very well. Since you are going to be so reckless, then I will satisfy you. Lin Ming said. Very well, let us proceed to the square. The alley they were at was too remote, with no one to bear witness. Lin Ming feared that Wang Yigao would go back on his words. However, if they were to duel before the many people of Sky Fortune City, even a thick-faced Wang Yigao would have no way of denying the results. Unless, he no longer wants to live in Sky Fortune City. A duel between martial artists is always a remarkable sight and the square would never be lacking in observers. In just moments, many people have started gathering there. Even some martial artists were mixed in amongst the observers. Seeing the two contestants, the crowd started talking. Isn't that army Lord Wang's son? Indeed, this bastard is about to start bullying others again. I wonder which family's child it is, to be so unlucky. A first stage in physical training going up against a second stage in physical training. That child is obviously going to lose. It seems that this child is just a commoner. For a commoner to be able to attain first stage in physical training is quite the accomplishment. A pity. 
It appears that he is going to become crippled. Wang Yigo's reputation within Sky Fortune City was not good and most of the people held sympathy for those who are weaker. In their eyes, compassion towards Lin Ming could be seen. The more people came, the more unhappy Wang Yigao felt. After all, a physical training second stager beating a first stager was nothing to be proud of. In addition, there was the fact that his opponent's identity was far below him. Thus, Wang Yigao did not want this scene to be witnessed by many. Wang Yigao said impatiently, What are you waiting for? Let us duel. After that, go break your own tendons. I will let you understand the gap between us. Seeing the high number of people gathering around, Lin Ming faced Wang Yigao and replied, Naturally, we will start the duel. However, if I lose, I would be at your mercy. Then, what happens if I win? Win. This bastard thinks he can win. Chapter 6. Fighting barehanded. Wang Yigao felt that this person before him must have some mental issues. While it is not impossible for one to defeat an opponent who is at a higher level of cultivation, that requires genius talent and pinnacle martial arts taught by masters. Lin Ming is a poor young man, for him to attain his current state of strength was already a great accomplishment. But considering his mediocre talent, he actually thought he could win. Could it be that he did not get enough sleep yesterday? Is he sleepwalking right now? Wang Yigao asked with a smirk. What do you want? If I win, I want 200-year-old blood ginseng, and 500 gold liangs. 200-year-old blood ginseng, and 500 gold liangs. The people around were all rendered speechless. This child is quite the high-maintenance type. 200-year-old blood ginseng would require up to 300 gold liangs. All of it would sum up to a whopping 800 gold liangs. This is no small number. However, one needs to be alive in order to take it. 800 gold liangs. Wang Yigao coldly snorted. You think you qualify? You think your arms and legs are worth that much? Within Sky Fortune Kingdom, the lives of nobles and commoners are not equal. Even if Wang Yigao were to kill someone, he would only end up being confined as punishment. After that, all he had to do was pay a compensation of 200 gold liangs. Lin Ming slowly replied, For martial artists, their arms and legs are priceless. If you are unwilling, then I understand. All you need to do is break off your own tendons. Screw you. You are asking for death. Wang Yigao furiously roared out, pulling the long sword on his waist. Lin Ming's face remained expressionless as he spoke. You have yet to answer my question. Heng, a mere 800 gold liangs. I can give you a thousand gold liangs. However, do you think you can live to take it? This senior will cripple you. If you can still preserve your life after three moves, this senior will have my name read upside down. Wang Yigao had become agitated, to Lin Ming's delight, more money for the taking. Very well, a thousand gold liangs it is. He had only finished speaking those words when Wang Yigo's sword slash descended upon him. A faint trace of golden light radiated from the sword, and a piercing sound resounded for dozens of meters. A martial technique. Martial techniques involve the use of primal energies to kill the enemy. When Wang Yigao claimed that he would kill off Lin Ming within three moves, he was not just being carried away by his emotions. Rather, he had confidence in his abilities, in his martial technique. The opportunity to learn these techniques is something that only the young masters of great families or disciples of martial houses could have. Once the martial technique is employed, those who do not possess martial techniques would find it difficult to endure. This was especially true considering the difference in martial cultivation between Wang Yigao and Lin Ming. Wang Yigao had absolute confidence in winning with just one move. The reason he had said he would kill Lin Ming within three moves was simply him preparing a backup in cases of what ifs. Wang Yigao was correct in his assumption that Lin Ming had not learnt any martial techniques. Lin Ming could only resort to common moves to deal with Wang Yigao's attack. When the surrounding people saw this scene, they all felt that the outcome had been determined. As for Lin Xiodong, his heart became nervous. How could Lin Ming block off this sword attack? Lin Ming's attention was focused upon Wang Yigo's incoming sword slash. Since practicing the true primal chaos formula from the chaotic virtues combat meridians, his perception had increased by several folds. In Lin Ming's eyes, Wang Yigao was a wild beast lunging towards him. For the past few days, Lin Ming had been dismembering countless number of wild beasts. Even though the beasts were already dead, 
Dismembering him still required him identifying the gap between the bones. Whenever his knife descended, it would be quick, accurate and vicious. At the moment when Wang Yigo's sword descended, Lin Ming's knife shot out. There were no calculations or considerations within his move, it was based purely on instinct. The knife went through the loophole within Wang Yigo's move, slashing upwards with a slight tilt. Equipped with a dazzling sword, going against an extraordinarily common knife, yet the results were something that no one could have expected. Lin Ming leaned to the side and dodged Wang Yigo's sword slash. The knife in his hands, however, had incredibly stabbed into Wang Yigo's ribs. Ping! After suffering from a stab of the knife, Wang Yigao exclaimed, his body collapsing and tumbling down onto the ground. What is going on? The surrounding onlookers were unable to understand what had just happened and were stunned. Presently, a one-foot-long hole had appeared on Wang Yigo's clothing, from his chest to his ribs. However, no blood was issued out. Instead, something silver shined through the hole. Flexible armor, Lin Ming secretly lamented. It turned out that Wang Yigao was wearing a flexible armor under his clothing. If not for the armor, that blow earlier would have dealt a heavy blow towards Wang Yigao's fighting potential. You, Wang Yigao was both shocked and furious, his eyes turning bloodshot. He had actually been hit. He was hit by someone whose martial cultivation level was one stage lower than him. In front of countless onlookers. For the prideful Wang Yigao, this was an unacceptable matter. I want you to die. Logically speaking, that strike earlier signified that Wang Yigao had lost. But, how could the enraged Wang Yigao admit his defeat? Wielding his sword, he once again aimed a slash at Lin Ming. Another martial technique was launched. As for Lin Ming, he was just like an experienced hunter, catching on to every weakness shown by a wild beast. Ping! The scene from earlier replayed itself. This time, a slash tore open a hole on the right side of Wang Yigao's clothing, turning it into a waistcoat. The surrounding onlookers were all stunned. They stared in disbelief at the outcome of the battle. How could this have happened? As the saying goes, one inch longer is one inch stronger. Wang Yigo's sword has a far longer reach than Lin Ming's boning knife. In addition, Wang Yigao possesses martial arts techniques and has a higher level of martial cultivation. But, in this fight, he ended up being stabbed twice with a seemingly ordinary move. That child, both his body speed and his knife speed is faster than Wang Yigao. A martial artist who was observing the duel commented, a physical training first stager beating a second stager in terms of speed was an unusual occurrence. Lin Ming's speed was indeed faster than Wang Yigao. In fact, the disparity in speed was quite considerable. This was the results of practicing chaotic virtues combat meridians. Before practicing it, Lin Ming's knife-wielding skill was already extremely accurate and insightful. However, his speed and strength was unable to complement it. It would only be natural for him to be unable to defeat Wang Yigao, who was at the second stage of physical training. But, with the existence of, chaotic virtues combat meridians, the situation was now completely different. Aaaa! Mad with fury, Wang Yigao tore off his outer clothing, revealing a silver-looking flexible armor. He had lost to a physical training first stage a brat. If he were unable to exact vengeance, then he would have no face to remain in Sky Fortune City. I will slaughter you. Wang Yigao desperately poured out the primal energies within his body, causing his sword to emit an even brighter radiance than before. He slashed down onto Lin Ming's head. If this strike were to connect, Lin Ming would certainly end up dying. At this moment, Lin Ming made a move that surprised everyone. He threw away his knife and faced his opponent bare-handed. All the onlookers were unable to comprehend this move from Lin Ming. This slash from Wang Yigao was obviously the final blow, backed with every last drop of energy. So, why is this teenager throwing away his weapon at the most critical moment? Surely, the knife is stronger than a fist. In times of crisis, he could even use it to parry the opponent's sword. Chapter 7. Innate Divine Strength. The strongest attacking method within the chaotic virtues combat meridians that Lin Ming practiced was not a sword attack, but a fist attack. At present, the force behind Lin Ming's strongest punch could leave a half-foot-deep indentation on an iron tree trunk. The durability of the iron tree was in no way inferior to steel. If the object being punched was stone, it would have been easily smashed to pieces. Lin Ming kept his gaze onto Wang Yigao, his eyes locking onto Wang Yigao's chest. 
Moving to the side, he threw out a punch. Peng! With a muffled sound, Wang Yigao spat blood out of his mouth and flew out. Even with the protection of the flexible armor, even with a martial cultivation of second stage of physical training, even with the training to toughen his flesh to an incredible degree, he was still unable to endure this superb punch from Lin Ming. Observing Wang Yigao falling onto the ground like a dead pig, the surrounding onlookers were left speechless. Wang Yigao had threatened to defeat Lin Ming in three moves, but the result was the complete opposite. Lin Ming instead defeated Wang Yigao in three moves. Within the exchange of three moves, each one had ended with Lin Ming being victorious. If not for the flexible armor, Wang Yigao would have lost early on. How was this a fight between a physical training first stager and a second stager? This seemed to be the complete opposite. Senior Lu, what is your opinion regarding this incident? In the midst of the duel, an elderly man appeared amongst the onlookers. In his younger days, this elder had once attained the fifth stage of physical training, bone forging stage. He was only one step away from reaching the pulse condensation stage. However, he had ultimately failed to break through. A bone forging stage martial artist has the same amount of lifespan as the common people. Naturally, their bodies could not withstand the ravages of time. Now that this senior Lu's age had exceeded 70, he no longer has any fighting strength. But, his perceptive eyes remained. The elderly man pondered for a moment before replying. That child is gifted with innate divine strength. The grade of a martial artist, be it grade 1 martial talent or grade 2, is simply the measure of the speed and ease with which their body could absorb primal energies. The faster they could absorb primal energies, the higher their martial talent would be. However, the martial artist's body strength is not included in the measurement for martial talent. That is because most people have the equivalent amount of strength. Occasionally though, some people would be born with innate divine strength. Some are born with ten times the strength of the normal people, and others more. With great strength comes great speed. Naturally, they would have an advantage in battles. Yet, the number of these martial artists is small. In addition, not many of them are successful. After all, as martial cultivation progresses, the primal energies become more important and the effect that one's innate strength has becomes correspondingly smaller. So that is how it is. The surrounding observers nodded their heads. This explanation was very reasonable. Lin Ming picked up his knife and walked step by step towards Wang Yigao. The current Wang Yigao was in a miserable state. His clothes had turned into strips of fabrics, blood spilled from his mouth, and his face was covered with dirt. Wang Yigao wanted nothing more than to kill himself. He had completely lost his face in today's incident. He would likely become the laughing stock amongst his peers within Sky Fortune City. Lin Ming spoke up. You are the one who said it earlier, 1000 gold liangs, cough it out. Shit. Hearing those words, Wang Yigao nearly spat out another mouthful of blood. Oh, what a son of a bitch I am. Did I really have nothing better to do? Why did I have to turn 800 to 1000? Even though Wang Yigao is a child of a great family, taking out 1000 gold liangs is no small matter. Today's incident was certainly the most miserable and unforgettable one in his entire life. With so many people bearing witness, Wang Yigao was unable to go back on his words. Additionally, since it was the terms of a duel, he could not even think about exacting vengeance or risk being ridiculed by all. Unless, unless it was done in utmost secrecy. Money, bring out the money, Wang Yiago shouted at his men. Today, he would have to admit his loss. But, this was not the end, he swore that he would hack Lin Ming to pieces. The group of men were all shocked senseless by Lin Ming's performance. Even if all of them were to gang up on Lin Ming, there was no guarantee that they could win. Is he really just a physical training first stager? Xiao Dong, collect the money, Lin Mind said. 1000 gold liangs was no small sum. Even though Wang Yigao is rich, he would not have brought so much money with him. Thus, he could only pull them up through his men. From the moment Wang Yigao vomited blood, Lin Xiaodong had been stunned. It was only after Lin Ming had called him that he finally reacted, Oh, my god. Is this for real? He actually won. Furthermore, they had won a thousand gold liangs. A thousand gold liangs. All of Lin Xiaodong's wealth combined amount to no more than only two hundred gold liangs. Buying up a single blood ginseng took up more than half of it. Looking at the gold bills within his hands, Lin Xiaodong's expression was one of shock. 
Then it turned into ecstasy before turning into one of laughter. His eyes were never big to begin with. Now that he was smiling to such an extent, his eyes were almost unnoticeable. Ha ha, we are rich, we are rich. You are too kind. What could I say? Thank you so much for your generosity. Knowing that we were in a tight spot, you seniors have chosen to gift us with some spending money, thank you. Especially brother Gao Yi Wong who felt that 800 liangs was not enough and had insisted on giving out 1000 liangs. On behalf of the common people, I give you my thanks. Hearing Lin Xiaodong's sarcastic words, Gao Yi Wong, who was already seriously injured felt his mouth overflowing and spat out another mouthful of blood. Back then, he had said that if he could not kill off Lin Ming within three moves, his name would be read upside down. Screw your granddaddy. Wang Yigao furiously gritted his teeth. As for the others, their faces were contorted to the extreme. As it so happened, Lin Xiaodong's face was not the attractive kind. To them, Lin Xiaodong's current face was so disgusting, it could kill. After collecting the gold bills, Lin Xiaodong spit out some saliva onto his palms in an exaggerated manner and started counting the bills one by one. 20, 30, 50, 100, 105, 107. Lin Xiaodong counted the thick stack of gold bills three times, then said with a grin and squinted eyes. 850 gold liangs, 150 short. I say, aren't you all men of wealth? How is it that you cannot even cough out such a small sum of money? Hearing Lin Xiaodong's words, Wang Yigao nearly vomited blood yet again. His face sank deep, he shook his right hand and a ding could be heard. His long sword was embedded in the middle of the square. Verdant sharp sword, it can be sold for 200 gold liangs in any weapons shop. We are leaving, six of them came to exact vengeance on others. However, the end result was them having to hand over all their possessions, including their swords. This pathetic state was a first for Wang Yigao. Seeing the verdant sharp sword, Lin Xiaodong grinned. He has some knowledge regarding weapons and the verdant sharp sword is truly an extraordinary weapon. At the very least, it is far better than the one he was using. Lin Ming said, if you like it, you can have it. Lin Xiaodong replied, I cannot do that. Brother Ming, you do not even have a weapon yet. Lin Ming replied, my fists are my weapons. For now, I have no need for a weapon. Later on, I will get myself a weapon that fits me. Even though this verdant sharp sword is sharp, it is too light for my fighting style. Lin Xiaodong recalled the fearsome fist that Lin Ming had thrown back then and had to agree that this sword was simply insufficient to complement with Lin Ming. Very well, I will take this sword then. However, you sure are fearsome, brother Ming. I never saw you as such a character before. Ever since Lin Ming started practicing martial arts, Lin Xiaodong had never witnessed Lin Ming in action. How could he have known that Lin Ming's strength had soared to such a degree? He believed this to be the results of Lin Ming's hard work. Lin Ming explained, Wang Yigao does not have a detailed grasp on his own strength, and is only a beginner physical training second stager. In addition, his foundation is also unstable. His level of cultivation is probably a result of stuffing himself with medications. Even his martial techniques were nothing of note. Beating him is nothing to be proud of. My first goal is Zhu Yan. Zhu Yan is different from Wang Yigao. Zhu Yan possesses a high amount of strength and a solid foundation. His grade 4 martial talent is not simply for show. In addition, he is also quite the hard worker. Thus, the current Lin Ming had no chance of beating Zhu Yan. Lin Ming accepted the gold bills, then split him apart and handed one stack to Lin Xiaodong without counting. Use this. What are you doing? This gold were all earned by you. I have already taken the sword. As for gold, I have no need for it. With my way of practicing, 10 gold liangs per month is the most I will need. Lin Ming remained silent for a while, then without objecting, he kept the gold bills into his own bosom. Between him and Lin Xiaodong, such details were unnecessary. All right, let us go to the fair. You were right. Ha ha. I nearly forgot about it. The fair. Now we have the capital for it, 1000 liangs. Son of a bitch. This senior had never even laid eyes on such a huge sum of money before. This time, I will be making a splash. Chapter 8. Qin Xingxuan. Lin Ming laughed out as well and said, That is right, we'll make a big splash. However, you will need to be careful when going out in the next few days. Hmm, you mean Wang Yigao. N. 
he would surely exact vengeance. He would not do so openly, but rather in secret. This is a bridge that we will have to cross. Lin Ming's tone lowered as he said that. If Wang Yigao were to drop this matter here and now, then everything would end. However, if he were to secretly conspire against them or send assassins to target them, then Lin Ming had no scruples in giving Wang Yigao a taste of his own medicine. Naturally, Lin Ming would rather not have to resort to such measures. After all, Wang Yigao's father is the lord of the defense army for Sky Fortune City. Once such an incident is found out, everything would end badly. The fair was held at the outskirts of Sky Fortune City. This place is where the biggest number of business transactions is conducted. There would be one summit of fairs held every year. In this fair, even martial masters of neighboring kingdoms would come over to find and buy the items that they require. As Lin Ming arrived at the entrance to the fair, he was shocked as he observed the bustling crowd of people and the high range of goods on display. This was a place of luxury, a world for nobles and masters. It would not be surprising to see a pulse condensation stager randomly moving around the crowd of people. As Lin Ming was observing the movements of the crowd, a disturbance occurred amongst them. Lin Ming turned his head to watch and was surprised to find a white luxurious carriage drawn by horses arriving at the entrance to the fair. The horses pulling the carriage were all the same precious type, draconic snow horses. These horses possess great speed and endurance. One of them could fetch up to 10,000 gold liangs in price. Forget the young masters of wealthy families, not even the young masters of great families would be willing to purchase it. What kind of personage could be inside it? For them to be riding in a carriage worth several tens of thousands in gold liangs, could it be that a member of the royal family is here? Lin Ming thought to himself. At this moment, Lin Xiodong spoke up. Do you see that crest depicting a knight with golden spear on the carriage? That is the martial quarters carriage. Martial quarters? You mean martial chin? Lin Ming asked. Who else could it be? There is only one marshal in all of Sky Fortune Kingdom. Within the military structure of Sky Fortune Kingdom, the position of a captain of 10,000 men is a great accomplishment. Next up would be the position of major. Above major is colonel. Above the colonel is the general. Finally, above the general is the marshal. In all of Sky Fortune Kingdom, only one person made it to the position of marshal during the past 80 years. A number of citizens of Sky Fortune Kingdom may not know of the current emperor's name. However, all of them knew the name of the marshal. The kingdom protector, Grand Marshal Chin Seo, 80 years ago, Sky Fortune Kingdom suffered from an invasion led by the Eastern Sun Kingdom. Countless lives were lost and the imperial family had to take refuge in the south. Chin Seo was the only one who had stayed behind. Commanding his Chin army forces, he contributed meritorious deeds in succession, reclaiming lost lands and saving the northern population who were in dire straits. After three years, the Qin army forces finally managed to defeat the Eastern Sun Kingdom. The capital was relocated and Qin Seo was granted the title of Marshal in the very same year. At the same time, the veterans of the military were organized to establish the Sky Fortune Marshal House. Due to their limited foundation, the Sky Fortune Marshal House is unable to compete with the Seven Profound Marshal House that is established by a Grade Three clan, the Seven Profound Valley. However, Sky Fortune Martial House also serves as the military academy for Sky Fortune Kingdom. Those who enter the military after graduating from Sky Fortune Martial House would certainly be able to attain a good position. As for Chin Seo, he is the honorary principal of Sky Fortune Martial House. His martial cultivation had reached the post-celestial stage, middle phase. For the average martial artist, the post-celestial stage and those beyond the pulse condensation stage is something too far away. Presently, the carriage had stopped and Lin Ming inhaled deeply. Could it be that Chin Seo himself is inside? That man is a legend. The carriage's curtain was pushed aside and Lin Ming became surprised. The one who had emerged was a young woman. Seeing the young woman, Lin Ming felt surprised while Lin Xiaodong's eyes became glued straight at her. What is a beauty that can topple kingdoms? This is it. The young woman was wearing a white dress, her black hair descending down onto her waist, her skin glistening with the luster of beautiful jade, her appearance as mesmerizing as the full moon, her eyes shining like the waters of autumn. She has a fine raised nose, pointed chin and a slender jade-like neck. There were simply no flaws that one could see. In addition, she exuded an aura of wisdom and purity, 
causing an inevitable thought to enter the minds of those who set their eyes on her, a peerless beauty. Escorted by her bodyguards and maids, the young woman came out of the carriage and proceeded into the fair. Wherever she went, it would seem as though numerous colors had lit up in the area and peach flowers would blossom. As for the young woman, she seemed to be dancing within this beautiful image, leading to everyone seeing her becoming lost in a reverie. All eyes were gathered onto her. Her carriage that cost several tens of thousands of gold liangs, her spectacular beauty, the Chin family that had endured for over 80 years. Any of these factors would have been enough to make her the center of attention. It was not until the young woman had disappeared from his sight that Lin Siodong was willing to turn away his gaze, a look of reluctance etched on his face. Lin Ming asked, Who is she? Do you know her? Lin Siodong answered, I do know her, but she doesn't know me. She is Qin Xiao's granddaughter, Qin Xingxuan. Truly, perfect. While explaining, Lin Xiaodong praised. Lin Ming only gave an, oh. He had somewhat guessed her identity and had simply asked without any motives. Thus, he was not too surprised. Lin Xiaodong glanced at Lin Ming and smiled as he continued. That girl is a grade 6 martial talent. Wah! What? Lin Ming was dumbfounded. Grade 6 talent? Are you certain? The highest talent that Lin Ming had seen before was grade 4. As for grade 5 talent, there was not a single one in Green Mulberry City. Perhaps these people do exist in Sky Fortune Kingdom, but their numbers would surely be limited. However, he had just been told that the young woman that had just passed by is a grade 6 talent. For him, this was simply an unimaginable fact. Li Xiodong had already expected this reaction from Lin Ming and said, I say, Brother Ming, don't you think that in comparison with her grade 6 martial talent, her looks are even more amazing? Lin Ming replied, I think that her talent is even more amazing, a grade 6 talent. This is simply unheard of. Speaking of which, what martial arts stage is she in? Lin Xiodong shrugged. I do not know about that. But, it must surely be unbelievably high, considering that she is gifted with such a high talent and also born within a great family, a physical training fourth or fifth stage is probably nothing surprising. However, Brother Ming, why do you only ask about these martial arts stuff? After seeing such a perfect beauty, aren't your heart moved at all? The question surprised Lin Ming. He is not made of wood. A fair lady is beloved by all gentlemen, and Qin Xingxuan is indeed perfect. However, after what had happened with Lan Yunyu, Lin Ming had come to understand that a loving family that can last forever could only be attained after he has enough strength. With his current level of strength, such pursuits were meaningless. Turning around, he asked, Why, do you like her? Nah, I am just an admirer. This girl is so far away from me, I cannot have those kinds of thoughts. I do not even know how many people within Sky Fortune City are hoping to be the lucky man. However, none of them is worthy. This girl would surely enter a true clan in the future, like the Seven Profound Valley. She had long since become a core disciple of the Seven Profound Martial House. Mortals like us simply cannot hope to match someone like her. But, what makes me most jealous is the fact that she is also an inscription master. Inscription master, Lin Ming do not have much understanding towards certain unique professions. Generally, these unique professions have a high demand in qualifications and the number of people holding those professions is small. The amount of money spent on those professions is also much smaller, comparable to a drizzle when placed beside the expenses necessary for martial arts cultivation. N. An inscription master can utilize special ingredients to engrave arrays and symbols upon weapons. They can strengthen equipment by engraving a symbol on it. This profession requires a high level of talent and a strong soul force. But, once one becomes an inscription master, earning money would be as easy as eating and drinking. Unfortunately, most martial artists would have no chance to come in contact with this profession. Even if they have the talent, they will have no chance of achieving success in their practice because the practice would involve too many materials. Naturally, that amount of money is only a drizzle for the Qin family. It is said that Qin Xingxuan's attainment in inscription techniques had reached a high level. She is unmatchable amongst her peers and could even beat many from the older generation. Lin Xiodong had received a formal education in the martial way, thus leading to a higher level of understanding compared to Lin Ming. As he was eloquently explaining, he suddenly realized that Lin Ming had his head lowered as though he was deeply considering something. Brother Ming. Brother Ming, you are not feeling aroused, are you? Well, 
considering what a heavenly beauty she is, this is normal. Nothing. Lin Ming waved his hand. So, that is what it was. Those arrays, inscriptions, engravings, various symbols and mysterious characters, simple-looking weapons that radiated a strong atmosphere that were within the soul fragment, they were all pertaining to inscriptions. It turned out that those items that he had temporarily ignored actually had such a high value. Chapter 9. Inscription Technique. The truth was, at the time Lin Mind had thought of giving up on pursuing any path of being an inscription master. It was because he singularly desired to practice martial arts, and the steps to being an inscription master were unfathomably difficult. One had to work themselves silly, and be able to comprehend thick and comprehensive tomes in short periods of time. It was also very serious and taxing in terms of spiritual consumption. Lin Ming did not have the energy to pursue both the martial path and inscription at the same time. But now things have changed, and that was because he needed money. For body transformation, there was no such thing as the good medicine, there was only better. What he was using right now was only budget goods. There was medicine in the world that was able to directly increase the cultivation level, and even to assist in breaking through bottlenecks. For this type of medicine, the price was of course astronomically expensive. Not only that, but weapons, armor, martial skills, all of it needed money. For Lin Ming, the 1000 tails of gold that he had won was only at pittance. It was insufficient to help him break into the pulse condensation period. If he wanted to make money, he would therefore need to become an inscription master. Lin Ming immediately decided to rent a room, and began to fuse memories left over from the soul fragment. These memories comprised the bulk of that little soul fragment, and they were also very obscure and difficult to understand. For Lin Ming this fusion took several hours. Lin Xiodong was left by himself to stroll around the trade fair. It was hard to imagine that his friend had come all the way to unexpectedly cultivate. This dedication was something to at least be admired and supported. He truly was a martial nut job. In the afternoon, Lin Ming finally opened his eyes. Although he had a splitting headache, a devilish smile split his face his eyes were bright and wide with the wild color of joy. The inscription techniques that originated from the realm of the gods were beyond exquisite and utterly profound. It was not something that the lower planes even dare hope to compare. The inscription techniques found within the soul fragment were unexpectedly amazing. They could increase the level of equipment. They could also increase the strength of medicines. One could also engrave the body itself to enhance the speed of cultivation. This was the sum of countless millennia of knowledge within the numerous dimensions of the realm of the gods. And it was only a tiny fragment. The lower planes might possibly have had some similar techniques, but most were without a doubt lost in the passage of time due to destruction of ancient sects or other such reasons. Skyspill continents engraved inscription technique can only increase the level of equipment. Moreover, even it can only do so by a tiny amount. To compare this with the realm of the gods' techniques was truly comparing the heavens and earth. Lin Ming raised himself to stand. Suddenly a wave of nausea swept over him. The massive amount of information emerged within the recesses of his mind. It was a pain that came with a certain virtue. He had spent three hours fusing with the soul, and had only managed to absorb half of the information so far. But in his mind he already had a clear plan. First he would buy the material and start from the very foundation to practice. In particular he would focus on increasing the efficacy of medicines and other compounded drugs, as well as the body engraving method. Lin Ming was ecstatic with the endless possibilities. It had to be known, there existed certain pills and drugs and herbs in this world that were prohibitively rare and precious. Even if you had any amount of money you still might not be able to purchase medicine like this. If the engraving inscriptions for medicine were applied, then the strength of one impossibly rare medicine could become two. What kind of ridiculous concept was that? As for the bodily engraving inscription, there wasn't need to say anything about increasing the practice speed. It was equal to enhancing one own's grade of talent. It was truly a heaven-defying technique. However, thinking of the precious materials that he would have to buy, Lin Ming gave a forced smile as he recalled recent events. He had succeeded in obtaining more than 800 tails of gold. He must spend this wisely. Sky Wind Grass Juice, Rank 3 Desolate Beast's Blood, Long-Tailed Cicada's Malt, Icebound Shrimp. Ling Ming purchased these materials in a frenzy. He could find only a few that matched those in his mind. Perhaps most ingredients he recalled were from the realm of the gods. If so, 
Even in the Sky Spill continent much less the Sky Fortune Kingdom, it was possible these materials did not exist. Whether for better or worse, Lin Ming had gone all in on inscription. He purchased several symbol papers and headed back to practice his inscription technique. This truly was a money-burning field. He must be successful in engraving these inscriptions and selling a few. Otherwise, he would not have any more follow-up funds. As Lin Ming was calculating, Lin Xiodong arrived back from the trade fair. His eyes widened as he saw the massive pile of materials in front of Lin Mind. You nut job, what have you done? Lin Ming did not know what to say, so he only replied truthfully, I'm studying the engraving inscription techniques. Studies? What studies? Lin Xiodong asked with a whisper as his eyes widened to the size of eggs. He did not dare to believe his ears almost. Studying the engraving inscription techniques. Lin Ming replied again. Your SSS studying the e-engraving inscription technique. Holy shit brother. My brother, my own brother were you turned into an idiot this morning. With less than 1000 tails of gold you want to study the inscription techniques. And where would you get a teacher? I purchased a rare and precious book. Lin Ming pointed to the table. Lin Xiaodong's eyes bulged again as he read the thick letters. Inscription technique. Getting started on the path to inscription. Lin Ming had bought the book mainly to understand the sky spill continent's inscription techniques and contrast them with the ones he acquired from the soul fragment. As Lin Xiodong saw this knockoff, inscription technique, getting started on the path to inscription, he almost vomited blood. He was speechless. He immediately began to regret boasting about the greatness of inscription masters in front of Lin Ming. The regret was heart-wrenching. He turned to the materials again and Lin Xiodong felt his heart bleed yet again. Although he didn't want to know, he still turned to look at Lin Ming and asked, this. How much did you spend on these materials? Lin Ming replied helplessly, about 70 tails of gold. Lin Xiodong sighed. 70 tails of gold he could accept, but the tone of his voice indicated Lin Ming had not finished. The following words almost caused him to collapse in a fit of despair. I have 70 tails remaining. At this point, Lin Xiaodong's world turned black, and he slipped past out on the floor. This young and handsome master. This is a very good inscription symbol paper. It is a product of the famous master Bai Hong. If you use it on a treasure, the strength and prestige is bound to increase by a minimum of 20%. At the trade fair's transaction hall, a man wearing formal clothes smiled as he introduced the goods to some juniors of large aristocratic families. After the inscription was drawn up it was placed on the symbol paper and could be used. One merely had to speak the command to mark the desired equipment. It was extremely convenient. This transaction hall was not a place where one could casually stroll through. It required an admission of 50 gold tails. To the average martial artist, this was not a small number. It was enough for them to purchase medicinal herbs for half a month. Lin Ming had paid the fee and entered. At this time the entirety of his fortune was a grand total of 75 tails of gold. He entered the transaction hall carefully and with the utmost caution. If he accidentally hit and bottle or pot, even if he sold his body to some old noble lady he would not be able to afford it. Lin Ming wanted to see how inscription masters made money, but this was the floor where inscription products were sold, so he could only spend the money to come here. This is Master Bai Hong's work. A young noble asked as he stepped forward. He was obviously attracted by the renown of this master's work. Do you have any proof, Clark? Certainly young master, we have proof that even master Bai Hung's own master will approve. Be reassured young master, that the goods at this trading hall have their providence known. If not, then we will compensate at ten times the price. Him. How much gold? Fifteen hundred gold tails. If you have the VIP card we can also offer a ten percent discount. Him. I think that. The young noble pondered this for a moment. Even if he was obviously rich, 1500 gold tails was not a small number. Hearing this price, even though Lin Ming was prepared, he was still startled. 1500 gold tails. This was simply gold coins raining from the heavens. But, since he was learning inscription techniques by himself, then it would be hard to turn a profit so early. Thinking of this golden rain, Lin Ming became excited. He was already brimming with impatience to learn inscription techniques. Chapter 10. Heavenly Ladies Gathered in the Holy Land. Although Lin Ming fused with the memories of the soul fragment, he could not make light of the difficulty of inscription. In order to obtain more knowledge to fill the gaps, 
He must practice body and mind spiritual coordination in order to fully integrate the soul's memories within his body. The materials for inscription were equal to his hard-earned gold. He could not waste a single bit of it. At this moment Lin Ming dared not use any of his precious materials. Instead he gathered the true essence within his body to practice. He circulated the energy in his body and every time it seemed to sync with the memories from the soul fragment, he carved the feeling into his mind. This was a very tedious and spiritually taxing process. But in Lin Ming's mind he could see tens of thousands of pages flipping one at a time, again and again, as his soul and body gradually acclimated and his movements became smoother. The soul force required was excessively demanding. Every now and then Lin Ming would take a short rest, and in the process he would read that alarming knockoff-like manual, Inscription Techniques, How to Get Started on the Path to Inscription, and he would feel relaxed. Although the manual could offer him nothing that he didn't know from the soul fragment, it let him have a more solid and concrete understanding of the sky spill continents engraving inscription techniques. At the end of a full day of practice, Lin Ming closed the Inscription Techniques, How to Get Started on the Path to Inscription, manual. In the manual was not a single description of anything resembling skyworm silk. The skyworm silk was a top priority for Lin Ming. He had seen many materials in the trade fair, but had not seen this, though he had found a good trail of information. The Sky Fortune Kingdom did have skyworms, but they were generally used for making zither strings. Lin Ming could not actually be sure that these two things were one and the same. Because the differences in quality of land and cultivation, Materials identified in the realm of the gods might not necessarily be the same, though they shared the same name. The sky worm silk in the realm of the gods could be completely different than the one in sky spill continent. Lin Ming identified not with the name, but with other factors such as appearance and smell. If these matched then it was most likely the same thing. But in Lin Ming's mind he has only the memories of the realm of the gods sky worm silk, and since he has not seen the sky spill continent's version he could not be sure they were identical. Lin Ming thought very carefully about where he could find skyworm silk and finally concluded that he might be able to locate some in the Seven Profound Martial House. The majority of martial artists may use the sword, sometimes the knife, or bow, and so on, but ever so often there are those that use extremely rare and precious weapons. For instance, the zither. Seven Profound Martial House's name of Seven Profound naturally originates from the Seven Profound Valleys. But Seven Profound Valley's name also originates from a faction of seven people, each of which uses various weapons. One of them was a female, and her weapon so happened to be the zither. Therefore the zither is also a legacy inheritance of the Seven Profound Valleys and has been passed down generation from generation to the present day. Because of this, it is an established department in the Seven Profound Martial House. But the difficulties of the zither are too many to count. The talent required was unbearably high but they also had to have a calm and regal temperament. Due to these requirements, this department of the Seven Profound Martial House had always been lonesome compared with the more popular departments. The vast majority, at least 99% of those who came to study the zither were women who came to cultivate their character and instrument skills and held neither interest in bloody killing nor interest in the extreme studying of martial arts. Lin Ming immediately set off. His destination was the Zither Department's public lecture hall where they publicly lectured. Each year the Seven Profound Martial House that was set up in the Sky Fortune Kingdom selected top-tier talents to enter the Seven Profound Valleys. At the request of the royal family, the Seven Profound Martial House also gave special permissions to non-students to enter the public halls where they were able to attend lectures. However in order to enter the public lecture hall one needed a special pass card. Otherwise everyone and their mothers and fathers and pet dogs would come. So the public lecture hall was waterproofed against anyone except those with permissions. The Seven Profound Martial House had laid down the rules for entry. One had to be at least the third stage of body transformation, part of the aristocracy, or a student of the Seven Profound Martial House or the Sky Fortune Martial House. Others did not have the privilege to enter the public lecture hall. The lectures were truly popular and in high demand but the real content was still reserved for core disciples. The pass card that Lin Ming currently had was borrowed from Lin Xiodong. The Lin family was very big after all, and many juniors and seniors that cultivated the martial path were naturally in the Seven Profound Martial House. With Lin Xiaodong's connections, obtaining a pass card wasn't too difficult. As Lin Ming first went to visit Lin Xiodong, who shouted, Brother, 
My own, dear brother. Have you finally been cured of your idiocy? Lin Xiodong truly did admire his brother's hard work and diligence towards inscriptions. In his heart he had always believed that this big bro of his would achieve the highest possible boundaries of martial artists and become a legend throughout the lands. But the engraving inscription techniques were something that were not achievable by just one's convictions. No matter how driven you were, you needed inborn aptitudes. If it was really possible to become an inscription master by tossing around 800 gold tails to purchase some materials and a copy of this truly shady manual, inscription technique, getting started on the path to inscription, then inscription masters would be crawling all around like ants. In Lin Xiaodong's eyes, for Lin Ming to study inscription was nothing but a pipe dream. Not only would he lose all his money and become a beggar, but he would also waste valuable time. But Lin Xiaodong was a true brother to Lin Ming. It wasn't possible to persuade him so Lin Xiaodong could only helplessly lend Lin Ming the pass card as he considered his options. He decided he would find an auspicious time and bring Lin Ming to the medical hall and find a renowned doctor. What else could be wrong with Lin Ming, but that his brain had been muddled and his spirit was disturbed. Then, Lin Ming arrived at the seven profound martial house zither department public lecture halls. It was a graceful building that was three floors high. The lecture area was spacious. However, pitiful and occasionally thick-headed Lin Ming did not know that the seven profound martial houses zither department public lecture hall was equivalent to a ladies' restroom. It was a truly holy land in which all men were expressly forbidden. The reason for this was that the zither department's students were essentially all women. These women who wanted to study the Tao of the zither tended to be from aristocratic families. In their entire lives they had been gradually influenced by the sweet melodies of music, and thus their appearances also were comparably high. They were among the most beautiful specimens of womankind. The result of this was that many aristocratic young masters' hearts were disturbed and tempted with lewd thoughts, and had the night dreams that they would poach one of two of these beauties. These young masters relied on their status to attain a pass card and could thus frequent the zither department to spy on girls with their dark and frankly dirty intentions. They did not come for the lectures, instead focusing their eyes on perving on the female students' curves, especially those with luscious thighs and rounder chests. Even after the lectures were over, they would follow them around and eat meals in their proximity and badger them as the ladies went shopping. Finally the beauties of the zither department reached the limits of their patience. They had come here to learn the Tao of the zither, and they needed to maintain a calm heart and peaceful mind, which impossible with all these lewd dogs hounding him about. Gradually the zither department began to prevent men from entering, in particular those shifty-eyed male hooligans and directly threw him out, relentlessly and without mercy. Lin Ming entered the zither department lecture hall, but the lecture time had not yet started, and several female students were quietly inside, exchanging talk and zither skills with each other. In the center a girl was playing a new tune. It was a nimble and fresh tune that was filled with elegance as the notes flowed out. It was a tempting tune that lingered on one's mind. Lin Ming approached to take a gander. The string on the zither was not skyworm silk, as he had anticipated. After all, skyworm silk was an expensive and rare item. The strings were also especially fierce and tenacious. Someone whose cultivation was too low could easily be wounded trying to play on skyworm silk. The young and fragile flowers of the zither department would have no way to use such powerful strings. The girl who was playing the zither was too dedicated to her craft to notice Lin Ming, but the two other female students who were listening naturally noticed the presence of a male. They knit their brows and frowned, but did not speak. Every other period of time there would always be some men with evil intentions hovering like flies. They would wait for their turn and while pretending to be some zither enthusiast, they would come closer only to look at the female students' chests. These sorts of men made the female students feel utter revulsion. The female students who studied the Tao of the zither tended to be thin-skinned, and did not want to lose face over arguing against some dirty beast over whether their goods were ogled, so many sexual deviants would be intense and even maybe cop a feel with their hands or feet. It wasn't until a group of sisters banded together under the guidance of the elder senior sister, and all the perverts were shown the door. Even so, there were still those utterly shameless and thick-skinned rogues and rascals, who even after being thrown out, would come crawling back with the excuse that they were true students of the Tao of the Zither, and that they wanted to study this, Tao of the Zither, together with other female students, and that they certainly did not entertain any dirty thoughts. 
but they were without a doubt, shameless students who were only masters of the Tao of depravity. Because of this, the elder senior sister also became equally ruthless, and the second day she set upright a bold sign above the entrance upon which was written, Men and dogs, do not enter. The matter became increasingly serious, and was finally addressed through the intervention of high-level members within the department. Men were therefore banned from the zither department lecture hall. The exception was that male students who came in could still enter, but under the absolute condition that their presence was determined by the zither department's female students. Any men that had a hint of lewd of evil intentions were instantly expelled and had all privileges forever revoked. As such, over time, now the zither department lecture hall no longer saw even the shadows of men. Lin Ming naturally does know the sordid history of the zither department and its war with all perverts everywhere. He looked around a while and did not find a single instrument that used sky worm silk, and so began stroll around down one side of the hall for a collection of books, hoping perhaps there wasn't something here that was related to what he was looking for. As he left them, several students finished playing, and they looked at the distant Lin Ming that was standing near the bookshelves. They said with a whisper, this fellow doesn't look like he studies the zither. Hmm, I think I saw that little shifty-eyed rascal looking at Seo Shan's hand a moment ago. Surprisingly he doesn't seem that old. He looks around 15 to 16 years old. Humph, this is our home turf here. A 16-year-old male should already be married. Someone at my age might already be a mother. The girl who spoke was only a light 17-year-old girl. In Sky Fortune City, 18-year-olds will generally have married by then. In the more rural countryside, they would even marry one or two years in advance, so a 16-year-old married man wasn't too rare. Whatever, it is not under our control. Elder senior sister will come to the lecture soon. If this fellow has any dirty thoughts she will immediately ask him to leave. Lin Ming had not heard this young girl's discussion, otherwise he would have been left speechless. He indeed did look at Seo Shan's hand, but that was only because he was trying to ascertain the material of the strings. He kept looking for the information on the skyworm silk. Luckily the zither department lecture hall was very large, and even this one side had a good area set aside for a collection of books, each of which held a variety of musical knowledge and history. Lin Ming of course was not interested in music whatsoever, he searched and searched and finally found what he was looking for. It was a manual named the Sky Zither List. Sky Zither List was an encyclopedia on ancient instruments of all sorts. That included origins, uses, manufacturers, materials, and other arcane knowledge, all of which were described in minute detail. Of course in these rare materials were also included the skyworm silk. Lin Ming was incomparably excited, and he began to read with vigor. Sky Zither List introduced the skywork silk's properties and gathering methods. The only fault so far was that was no available picture of the skyworm silk, but Lin Ming was able to roughly determine that this was the sky worm silk that he was looking for. Lin Ming was just innocently and earnestly reading, and did not realize at all that the number of female students in the lecture hall began to creep up. They on the other hand did notice him in the corner by himself. In this group of heavenly beauties, the presence of a single man in his dirtied clothes was truly plain as day. Luckily Lin Ming had not looked around as all his heart's attentions were focused on the book. Even though the female students thought it might be fake, they did not have any evidence that they could use to throw him out. Originally the lecture would have proceeded smoothly, but there existed the zither department's legendary elder senior sister, who retained an enormous prejudice against the entirety of mankind. In the social circles of aristocratic young masters, the senior elder sister's name was like a thunderbolt that reverberated in their ears and caused their hearts to heat with anger. That sign upon which, no man or dog shall enter, was an insult to all of them and caused them to feel the pain of losing so many chances with ladies of such appreciable goods. They cursed her to remain a spinster for the rest of her life. In fact, the elder senior sister was a beauty among beauties. She was around 20 years of age, and had a flawless oval face, stature that belonged to royalty, long and slender thighs and legs that climbed to the sky, and her most dangerous weapons of all, the twin peaks of Mount Tai. It was a pity that the elder senior sister had never shown any interest in men, and was easily irritated with a short temper. Any male who dared to gaze upon the forbidden snowy peaks of Mount Tai would be referred a swift and decisive kick between their two legs. After the elder senior sister arrived, she instantly discovered Lin Ming. 
Her willow eyebrows instantly wrinkled and she laid down her zither and arrived in front of him. She wrapped her fingers three times on his desk and asked him, How did you get in? Chapter 11. Elder Senior Sister. When someone is angry there can be differences in the projection of that anger. With just a few words, or a slight change in body language, the story told and the effect had would be drastically different. For instance, this elder senior sister had her slender eyebrows pointing straight up, her waist was rigid and unbendable, and in addition to the knocks on the table, the intense and murderous gaze, and the chilling tone used, her killing intent was soaring to the heavens. A young, simple-hearted male student who saw her would only be frightened out of his wits and cause a mess in his pants, timidly being unable to speak. Lin Ming was also a bit confused, and wasn't sure if he came to lecture the proper way, so he asked a bit timidly, was I not allowed to come here? As soon as the elder senior sister heard Lin Ming's words, her heart instantly raged with flames of anger. This little rascal, she did not believe that he could possess a pass card and still not know that the zither department had an unwritten agreement that all men could not enter. At this moment, a sweet and gentle voice sounded out, Sister Ling, what is happening? Lin Ming looked towards that sweet sound and he was suddenly shocked. It came from a girl wearing a simple white dress, with hair like flowing ink. She was simply an elegant immortal beauty with incomparable grace. She was none other than Marshal Qin Xiao's granddaughter, the infamous Qin Xingxuan. At the trade fair, Lin Ming had seen her from afar. In every single parameter, from her number one family background, her sixth grade talent, her peerless beauty and charm, her skill at inscription, and strength, all of this made even top-tier talents feel inferior. Although Lin Ming thought that with his stroke of heavenly luck, he was destined for greatness and would be able to become a hero of the entire sky spill continent, at this moment Qin Xingxuan was an unattainable existence. Let alone him, before her presence even that spoiled bastard Zhu Yan would be nothing but a frog staring out of a well. Lin Ming was astonished, he had not thought that he could see Qin Xingxuan at this moment, but his astonishment was seen by everyone and especially the elder senior sister. Humph. This was his true sexual deviation nature emerging at last. The toad thinks he can eat some swan. The elder senior sister's heart burned as she criticized him. The truth was the girl's thoughts were complex at this moment. Although the elder senior sister thought him a repugnant man, after Lin Ming did not respond after seeing Qin Xingxuan, she did not get the general feeling that he was some sort of prevent. This didn't sit well with her. After all, all men were perverted. She said to Qin Xingxuan, this deviant little child snuck in to harass us women. I am questioning him. You, where is your pass card? The following few words after were to Lin Ming, who could only scratch his head. When did he come here to harass girls? Why was he being accused of this? He said, I only came here to look up some reference books. Please don't accuse me of anything I did not do without evidence or proof. All you are doing is drawing absurd conclusions and insulting mine and your intelligence. Looking at reference books. All you did was look at that, sky zither list. Are you thinking that you are going to make a zither, or something? Lin Ming didn't have anything to say in response, so he casually said, I just wanted to understand some things. Humph, these shameless lecherous men have always said they wanted to understand music and used this as an excuse to take advantage. Such acts are really disgusting. So you have interest in zither's hymn? Good, then I ask you, how many notes does a zither have, and what are they? What king of zither material suits the treble notes? What kind of material suits the bass notes? If you can tell me and satisfy me with answers then I'll believe you have an interest in music and you want to study the zither. Lin Ming froze on the scene. He knew only the most minimal details of zithers and music, much less zither knowledge of which he knew nothing. Humph! So you dare to lie in public? You just wanted to look at a book so you could appear as if you were acting casually? You little pervert! Your real goal was to peek on us girls. I've seen your kind plenty enough. Hand over your pass card, scum. The elder senior sister put out her hand in front of Lin Ming. Lin Ming was silent. His pass card was borrowed, and although the seven profound martial house was lax in their use, he had to conform to the rules since he was here using the pass card. But Qin Xingxuan said, Sister Ling, consider this matter settled. This is only his first offense. There is no need to be so harsh on the boy. Qin Xingxuan also thought that Lin Ming was lying, and the truth was that he was indeed lying. The elder senior sister could naturally not disregard Qin Xingxuan's words, so she said, Xingxuan, your heart truly is too gently. 
we really cannot afford to tolerate people like this. This kind of person, just taking his pass card is being lenient. Take my pass card, Lin Ming said with a shock. You are also a student. You aren't part of the school authority. What jurisdiction and right do you have to confiscate anything of mine? Humph. What a smart mouth. I have the qualifications to confiscate the pass card and this was granted to me by the school authorities to me and me alone. In this zither department everyone must give me face. What I say goes. Here, I am the god. Now hand it over, or you'll see what I can do. The pass card was borrowed from Lin Xiodong. Naturally Lin Ming could not let it be taken. Or else how could he face his brother who had taken such pains to get it for him. Lin Ming does not have any choice but to admit his true purpose. In fact this wasn't really anything. Inscription development was nothing new. And new materials being researched were a common matter, whether or not they succeeded. Lin Ming said, I am researching inscription techniques in regards to the sky worm silk material. Researching inscription techniques, using skywork silk as a new material in some technique. If these words came from the lips of an inscription master in their 50s or 60s, then the elder senior sister wouldn't be surprised. But to hear these words from a young boy of 15 to 16 years who was still wet behind the ears. The development of new materials and techniques. Were you kidding me? Was this a bad dream? Only an inscription master who was practicing techniques and found his current materials inadequate would go to seek something new as a substitute. This 15-year-old country bumpkin, at best his foundation would be reading some shoddy guide like, inscription techniques, how to get started on the path to inscription. Even that would be considered good. So to develop new materials, on what basis was he not lying out of his ass again? The elder senior sister laughed out loud and said, you think we are dumb or something? It's true that I do not personally understand inscription at all, but unfortunately for you, you are out of luck. At my side is the greatest inscription talent in the entire Sky Fortune Kingdom, and even in several countries around. You want to show off your garbage skills before a true expert. I really am going to die smiling here. Xingxuan, I ask you, have you started to study new materials yet? Qin Xingxuan gave a straight look at Lin Ming. She was similar to him in age and could not think that Lin Ming was saying anything that wasn't a lie. She said, engraving inscription techniques are numerous and have profound diversity. Even just in primary materials, there are recorded over 13,600 kinds, and in more advanced materials, become of their secrecy it is hard to state the number. Even these 13,600 materials are enough for an inscription master to learn for years to discover their effects, usages, mix ratios, structures, and other such things. My own talent is low, and I have not been able to find the use for all these primary materials, much less search for alternatives. The elder senior sister laughed with a self-satisfied smile. Ha ha, the little perverted boy is spinning his web around and around and now it all comes crashing down. Spin some more boy, this big sis is waiting for you. Lin Ming heard this grossly exaggerated laughter and could only laugh to himself. This woman was certified crazy a complete nut job. Was she dumped by a man or something? She had some sort of psychological abnormality towards men. He said, I really am here to study. I am studying the inscription techniques and was suddenly inspired by a dream. Who said that I must succeed or would not succeed? Who said that a new inscription apprentice could not study new materials? Humph. It seems you're not scared of death until you see your own coffin. Good. Very good. This big sis is a reasonable human after all. Today I will let you sincerely convince Xingxuan here. The inscription technique I don't understand, so you test him. Qin Xingxuan was frustrated. The elder senior sister was indeed paranoid of men. But looking at this young man he had to be lying. He was young and wearing simple attire so his family background can't be prominent. Did such a youth really have the financial resources and opportunity to learn the inscription techniques? Why would you mercilessly expose the poor boy to this extent? She said, Sister Ling, please let this be considered as finished. The elder senior sister replied, Xingxuan, you are just too kind-hearted. You do not know how we were initially harassed by these scums, and our struggles to stop them. If we are tender-hearted and merciful, then there will be no end to their pestering. Qin Xingxuan didn't have anything she could further do except ask him a few simple questions. It would be fine if he could at least answer one. This fellow student, do you know who established the Sky Fortune Kingdom's inscription technique? 
Qin Zingxuan asked the most general question as possible. But even this caused Lin Ming to be silent and scratch his head. Who the hell knew what old fogey established the Sky Fortune Kingdom's inscription technique? And who even cared? The memory of the realm of the gods would not have such trivial knowledge. And even the manual, inscription techniques, how to get started on the path to inscription, only spoke of the rudimentary knowledge, and did not expand on the history or the Sky Fortune Kingdom's inscription technique history. Seeing Lin Ming stuck, the elder senior sister's smile grew increasingly radiant. This only confirmed for her that the youth was nothing more than a pervert of the Tao of Deviance, and in her psychologically warped mind she wanted to torment the little rascal some more for fun. You don't know even this. Even I know you have nothing to say. But Lin Ming reluctantly said, I do not know history, but I know a bit about pharmacology and material reactions. Pharmacology and material reactions. This was quite a broad and diverse field that not even Qin Zingxuan had begun to master, much less this youth. Qin Zingxuan thought that, that there were some truly unreasonable people. If they were wrong first, then they just had to admit it and it would all be good. What was the meaning of continuing the deception further? Therefore she asked a not so simple question, as she wanted to end this boring and insignificant interrogation. After all she came here to study the zither, and she was missing the lecture. Although Qin Zingxuan's weapon was a sword, that didn't stop her from playing an instrument either. Then this student, do you know the, shock, inscription and the unique pattern and characteristics of it? Chapter 12, Qin Zingxuan's Invitation. The engraving inscription technique may use tens of thousands of different materials, from the common to the incomparably rare. These materials could be combined in a variety of different ways, and when supplemented by an inscription master, they would then be able to draw a myriad of arcane and profound inscriptions. The inscription techniques contain 3,600 foundation lines and 4,900 foundation symbols. These myriad lines and symbols could then be combined into a variety of permutations to trance and engrave the ever-changing inscription technique. The shock inscription was only a single one of the 3,600 kinds of foundation lines. Lin Ming naturally knew the shock foundation line. In fact, he knew that the foundation's lines was not limited to 3,600, but there were actually 6,000 different types. It was almost double the foundation lines that the inscription masters of the Sky Spill continent possessed. However, just like the Sky Worm Silk, Lin Ming was not sure that the Sky Spill continent's shock line was the same the one in the realm of the gods. He could only hope that there weren't too many differences. He stretched out his right hand and the true essence gathered on his fingertips. With his hand he drew a series of brilliant lines in the air. They glowed with a silent and gorgeous light and finally coalesced into a complex diagram that shone in front of Qin Zingxuan and the blankly staring elder senior sister. Lin Ming had been practicing these inscriptions every day, and the soul fragment's memories and his finally began to harmonize. The results of this were in two words, quite handy. Lin Ming asked, was this the, shock, symbol? Qin Zingxuan stared dumbfounded, and the elder senior sister looked at her and noticed her expression. She instantly able to determine that this young hooligan was not just doodling with his fingertips, but had drawn the, shock, line and there was no mistake about it. Shit, this young hick pervert actually unexpectedly understood inscription techniques. Wasn't this just too preposterous? In Qin Zingxuan's heart she was truly surprised and was trying to not reveal her complex emotions. There were 3,600 foundation lines, and it was absurdly difficult for an amateur to remember them completely. It wasn't too strange to say that Lin Ming knew this one foundation line, but what startled her was the, shock, symbol he drew was completely correct. The energy was placed in the right spots and it was simply astounding. This could only the results of painstaking effort during practice. With a bit of depression in her heart, she startled, it is. Lin Ming said, the, shock, pattern is a sign of the killing god. Its use typically will have it placed on a weapon. When a martial artist uses a weapon, he will generally concentrate his energy on the weapon, and the energy will be used in a battle to defeat the enemy, but the increased effectiveness is limited. If the, shock, line is placed on the weapon, then when a martial artist concentrates his energy in the weapon, it will flow through the, shock, pattern and create a high-speed vibration which increases the penetrating power, effectively increasing the degree of weapon sharpness. Lin Ming easily explained the, shock, pattern as Qin Zingxuan had expected. If he was able to draw the, shock, pattern with such skill, then he of course had to know the principles behind it. 
It would only be strange if he did not. Qin Zingxuan's competitive spirit was also aroused. She couldn't let this boy outdo her. She asked, then, this fellow student, do you also know the flag, symbol drawing technique and principle behind it? She had abandoned the relatively simple foundation lines and raised the stakes to some of the more complex foundation symbols. However, this naturally could not confuse Lin Ming. In fact, Lin Ming's understanding of foundation symbols was far more deep and profound than anything that could be offered in the sky spill continent. He calmly drew the flag symbol in the air. Although the foundation symbols were somewhat complex, Lin Ming's finger did not have the slightest pause, and in the blink of an eye the complex inscription symbol sparkled in the air. Now, even Qin Zingxuan was completely awed. The foundation symbol was far more complex with double the lines and even more so difficult to trace the energy in the symbol, but Lin Ming had done so with ease. This had already far surpassed Qin Zingxuan. My god, this was a genius. Unexpectedly this random kid turned out to be a genius among geniuses in inscription talent. But who did he study with to learn this godly engraving inscription technique? His appearance indicated he was not from some big aristocratic family. Was it possible that he was apprenticed to some ancient sage or extraordinary hermit who liked to live in the remote and secluded mountains? Qin Zingxuan found that Lin Ming was filled with riddles, and she continued to test him. The more they exchanged the more she was surprised. This Lin Ming was not like he seemed. There were 3,600 lines and 4,900 symbols which added to more than 8,000 different kinds, and he casually listed them, as if he were familiar with each one. Compared to Qin Zingxuan's surprise, the elder senior sister was already floored by their conversation and remained confused on the sidelines as the two inscriptionists spoke to each other in what seemed to be a different and completely heavenly language. She could only look on at Zingxuan who showed increasing amazement and admiration. The elder senior sister understood Zingxuan very well. Do not be fooled by Qin Zingxuan's elegant and cool expression. She treated everyone with good manners and effortless grace. But the truth was that the natural sixth rank talent and her immense strength had doomed her heart with the soul of arrogance. Before now, she had never given anyone of the same generation such a high appraisal. Finally the elder senior sister became numb. She only understood one thing. Today it would be impossible to confiscate this boy's pass card. Shit. To think she would make such a big mistake. She stomped her feet on the ground. To think that this random hick kind could actually be some sort of inscription talent. This elder senior sister was really going to go mad. Gradually, Qin Zingxuan's expression grew increasingly respectful from the tone when the exchange started it became progressively humble. She found that by conversing with Lin Ming, her knowledge of symbols and energy structures insights had a broadened outlook due to his unique understanding and depth of knowledge. It was a great and rewarding feeling. Qin Zingxuan was able to confirm her suspicions that Lin Ming was a rare talent that could only emerge once a century. But behind him was an even greater mystery. This shadow master that taught him could only be an inscription master of absolute knowledge and authority. Even if compared with her own teacher, it was like comparing a candle to the raging sun. Exactly what kind of origin did this youth have? Qin Zingxuan had great interest in Lin Ming. Not mention the exchanges they had in which she just profited, but Lin Ming himself, and the mystery teacher behind him had extraordinary significance to the Qin family. With that thought, Qin Xinghuan said, Fellow student, it's about time to begin zither lessons, so I'll have to excuse myself. It was very wonderful talking to you today. If possible, perhaps after the zither lecture ends, then little Xingxuan would like to ask you to go to the Great Clarity Pavilion for a quick meal, and explore the principles of inscription technique together. Is this agreeable with the fellow student? Qin Xinghuan's sweet and dulcet voice was very persuasive, and coupled with her sincere expression and heavenly appearance, it was hard for any male to refuse. The truth was Lin Ming did not want to reject her. Not only was Qin Xinghuan's background impressive and she herself beautiful, she was also rare in that she treated others well and did not have any airs of superiority. In front of such a girl it was impossible to have any hint of malice. However Lin Ming was too tight on time and the exam for the seven profound martial house was only three months away. He needed to make money during this period with the inscription technique to purchase the medicines he needed, and then engrave the inscriptions on the medicines and further his own cultivation as quickly as he could, all in order to enter the seven profound martial house. Even if he entered the seven profound martial house he would still need strength. 
there was still that slimy Zhu Yan that would undoubtedly be eyeing him for a fight. If he didn't increase his strength, then he couldn't even be considered a worthy opponent for Zhu Yan, and would be stepped all over miserably. Lin Ming was simply uninterested to stay in the zither class, and then have lunch with a beautiful woman, and after lunch continue chatting with the day disappearing without any of them keeping track, and then exchanging contact information with the aim of meeting again. For Qin Xingxuan this was good and dandy, but for Lin Ming he would learn nothing. After all just in the exchange right now, it was Qin Xingxuan that had picked up all the advantages and insights, and there was no new knowledge or inspirations that she could confer upon Lin Ming. So Lin Ming somewhat regrettably refused and said, I'm very sorry, but today I have some things to do, so I must hurry back. Oh, I, well, I should have known, Qin Xingxuan said with regret and her cheeks flushed red. She had asked him and had not considered the possibility of rejection. In fact, Qin Xingxuan since her childhood days had never once invited a boy of the same age as her to eat a meal. But she has been asked out countless times, all of which she rejected as she ate together with her close friend. When refusing others' time and feelings, she had absolutely no feelings towards it. But this time she was the one rejected, and her number one discovery was that the taste of rejection was also very bitter as if she suffered from injustice. After all even though she came from a large aristocratic family, in the heart of her heart she was still a 15-year-old young girl. To Lin Ming's rejection, the elder senior sister's brain short-circuited and she almost ran up to slap him around. In her mind was only one thought. This guy, this guy actually refused the one and only Qin Xingxuan. My god, is such a thing even possible on this beautiful world? Is he really a man? Chapter 13. Inscription. Go. Hey you. Stop. Stop you hear me. Do you even know who she is? The elder senior sister yelled with utter disbelief. Although it wasn't evident from just looking at Qin Xingxuan's cool expression, but because they were the closest of friends, she knew what the poor girl was thinking. How could she let this little punk get away with harming the heart of her dearest friend? Why must men always be this cruel and thoughtless? This was what scholars called a true miscarriage of justice. This man truly was a hateful specimen of all mankind, let alone the most stunning beauty Xingxuan. Even if a random girl plucked from the zither department were to be presented, it would cause hordes of men to run over like dogs. This boy didn't know his own limits. For any man to just simply reject Qin Xingxuan like it was just another day, this must have been a dream. Lin Ming's heart mourned. He certainly knew who Qin Xingxuan was, but it wasn't like he could reveal his plans, so he tried to skirt around the subject. Elder senior sister, I really do have something I must do, I'm not lying to you here. Who the hell are you calling elder senior sister you little rascal? Look, I'm not going to quibble with you over such small matters, so I'm going to show some grace and lend you some servants to do whatever it is that you needed to do, however unimportant it may be. The elder senior sister stood in front of Lin Ming with her hands firmly set on her waist and blocked him from leaving. Although her family background wasn't anywhere near as grand as Qin Xingxuan, she was also from an aristocratic family and dispatching a few servants to handle matters in Sky Fortune City was simplicity itself. Lin Ming was at a loss of words. This maiden was too overbearing and haughty, he said, my business is cultivation, I just don't have the time in these few upcoming months to spare. The elder senior sister wanted to say something, but Qin Xingxuan interrupted her, let this fellow student leave, perhaps it is his master calling him. In Qin Xingxuan's mind, with Lin Ming's accomplishments at his young age, he must have focused most of his life's attentions on diligently practicing. In these cases it was only natural that his mysterious master would arrange harsh lessons for him every day. Hearing these words of hers, Lin Ming felt relief in his heart. Although he had spoken the truth, and he was just a tad more mentally mature, compared to these two beauties, he could not relax because of their overwhelming strength and background. With just a word alone, they could crush him. As Lin Ming prepared to leaving, Qin Xingxuan smiled and said, My name is Qin Xingxuan, if fellow student is ever finished with his cultivation and has some time to spare, please come to the marshal's quarters to look for me. Your presence will always be welcome. Lin Ming paused in his step, and told her his name, Lin Ming. Then Lin Ming walked away. Staring at his department back, Qin Xingxuan could only sigh. What sorts of characters were used to spell his name? Was it Lin as in forest, and Ming as in bright? With just these two characters, there would be too many duplicates in Sky Fortune City. 
How would she find him in this city? As he returned from the Seven Profound Martial House, Lin Ming had already decided what he needed. The Sky Fortune Kingdom did produce sky worm silk, but it was mainly used for instruments. With his martial arts background, it was difficult for him to find and purchase. However, he could have Lin Xiodong request the family to purchase some, as such a large family certainly had musicians and it would be easy to obtain as long as one paid market price. From the Sky Zither list, Lin Ming could tell the approximate price of Sky Worm Silk was about 20 tails of gold per foot. Although it didn't sound too expensive, it was because Sky Worm Silk was very thin and light. If calculated in weight, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that it would require over a 10,000 tails of gold to purchase a single pound. Lin Ming only had 70 gold tails, so he could purchase three feet. At the trade fair he had spent 800 tails of gold to buy a massive pile of materials, but just three feet of skyworm silk would cost 60 tails of gold. This was three feet would no doubt be light, and it only proved that it was prohibitively expensive. Lin Ming tacked a calendar onto his bedpost with pages equal to the number of days he had left. He would rip one off every day. The first month he would spend practicing the inscription technique, and the other two months he would purchase the medicines he needed and then cultivate like a madman. He believed that with this elixirs and pills, he would be able to break through the first stage of body transformation, and perhaps even reach the peak of the second stage. If he could reach the peak of the second stage, then even if he couldn't exceed Zhu Yan, at least he would not suffer a disastrous loss. After using his true essence to practice a hundred times, Lin Ming finally began the formal steps to inscription that involved materials. This was how most inscription masters started, but Lin Ming did not have the luxury to casually waste the materials he had. He had to treat each and every precious attempt with the utmost care. With this pile of materials that cost 800 tails of gold, he had to come out with at least a single viable inscription. Inscription not only required good perception, it also needed a good teacher, financial support, and most of all, a powerful soul force. Because in the inscription process, one had to control the engraving marks by using their soul force to draw the energy structure. Lin Ming's soul force had already been measured as a child, and it was also a third grade soul force. The third grade soul force and third grade martial talent could be considered decent. To an aristocratic family with no history of martial arts, it was good, but it certainly wasn't anywhere near the top. Martial artists in the physical transformation stage did not have many reasons to use their soul force, so this was Lin Ming's first time utilizing this form of energy. He began to mobilize his soul force in accordance with the memories found in the soul fragment. He circulated this soul force in his body, familiarizing with it, and moving it with his mind. All living beings had a soul force, but being able to consciously move it was something that the average person could not dare to achieve. It required the soul law formulas, and needed daily rigorous practice. Many inscription masters have managed to memorize the varieties of symbols and basic structures, but if their time studying the soul law formulas were inadequate, it would result in them not being to use soul force. If one could not use the soul force, then the material could not be utilized. As a result, they would not even have the qualifications to waste these goods. As soon as Lin Ming began to revolve the soul law formula, a feeling of deep peace came from the memories of the soul fragment that filled him with a familiar sensation. This soul law formula that he used, the elder who the memories had belonged to, must have used it a truly terrifying number of times before his death. With this kind of familiar feeling it was as if Lin Ming had been practicing inscription techniques for his entire life, and he felt his fatigue fade away. Not only that but the majority of his soul force was retained and he did not need to worry about any negative influence from the memories. He gently placed out his hand and the invisible soul force began to tug at the sky wind grass roots and suck out the juices. With Lin Ming's mind, he began to practice changing the juice into various shapes under his control. Sometimes he made it into thin strings, sometimes he condensed it into a crystal clear bubble. This kind of ease even caused Lin Ming to be surprised. He knew that in the cheat manual, it had stated that for those that could utilize soul law formulas, those with inborn talent of perception would only need one month, while those with lesser talent could practice for half a year and still have no results. Each inscription master had their own personal soul law formula. The soul law formula naturally had its different rankings, as some were worse and some were better. Inscription masters thus naturally regarded their own soul law formulas with great love and care. 
It was something that they might not even pass down to their disciples, because the soul law formula would directly influence the ability to utilize the soul force. It was of the highest importance to an inscription master. Without a shadow of doubt, the overbearing soul tactic within the memories of the elder was at the apex of soul law formulas. Even the sky spill continent's greatest inscription masters were nothing but little bumpkin children compared to this great elder. Adding that Lin Ming had a familiarity with the law soul formula that originated from the memories, in practice his third grade soul force talent was on par with a fourth grade talent, and perhaps even a fifth grade. These were the precious techniques that had been left by the memories. His five fingers easily formed a simple seal, and a surge of soul force entered the drop of sky wind grass juice. Lin Ming's fingers drew a lane in the air that shined with a sparkling light. The soul force interfaced with the sky wind grass juice and rapidly coalesced into a pleasant and mystical rune. The rune was smaller than a fingernail, yet it contained a complex energy. Even within the same rune, because of the subtle differences in shape, technique, strength of the soul force, and other factors, 10,000 inscription masters would have 10,000 different manifestations and within these there would be those of lesser or greater profundity. Lin Ming could not tell whether the symbol rune he created was garbage or treasure, but he was still satisfied with his result. He began to create his next symbol rune. He had only used half a drop of the sky wind grass juice, so he still had half a drop remaining. His fingers twisted as he formed another seal, and began to condense his soul force with the half drop into another seal. However, as soon as the seal flashed, there was a slight murmur and Lin Ming's soul force which caused in degradation in the output. Lin Ming could only gaze on as that half drop of liquid turned into floating ash. Lin Ming could only sigh and bite his tongue. It required about a gin of roots in order to create that single drop and it cost a few tails of gold for those roots. For the general populace, that was the monthly income of an entire family. It was hard to imagine, but for those that had just begun studying inscription techniques, there was no way for their soul force to be stable, and thus failure was an everyday occurrence, and successes were the true miracles. In the blink of an eye a few tails of gold had evaporated into the air. In one day it was easy to spend a few hundred tails of gold on practicing inscription techniques. It truly was burning away money. With the taste of failure still fresh in his mouth, Lin Ming became increasingly cautious. He moved his fingers again to form a seal and one by one more inscriptions emerged from his hands. Of course, he failed more often than he succeeded, but as time went on the number of failures began to decrease. As Ling Ming produced more runes, he began to discover that his own scant soul force was just too weak, and this was related to his first state of body transformation. Even with the top-tier, true primal chaos formula, and overbearing soul tactic, supporting him, he couldn't continue for much longer. Along such little soul force, Lin Ming couldn't form the runes as easily as he could before. Moreover, more faults began to show in him due to a lack of soul force, and with each fault that occurred, it was also a waste of soul force. As his soul force became increasingly low, Lin Ming's inscription process was only at the halfway point. However, he began to have difficulties in sustaining the soul force, and without him sensing, the soul force in his body had been too exhausted and a wave of dizziness passed him. The runes in front of him began to vibrate, as they verged on the border of being shattered. Lin Ming's heart jumped, and he quickly stabilized his soul force. In an instant his palms were covered in sweat. He had almost made a mess of things. How many tens of tails of gold would have disappeared? But Lin Ming could see that shining gold pot at the end of the sweat-covered rainbow. He slugged right on through. Chapter 14. Increasing Strength. Lin Ming spent half of his concentration on maintaining the integrity of the symbol runes with his true essence, and the other half of his concentration was directing the true primal chaos formula to speed up the rate of true essence absorption. With these two opposing thoughts in his mind, he failed his inscription. After five consecutive failures and five piles of materials turned to ash, Lin Ming came to the realization that he was completely unable to complete the inscription before he ran out of true essence. After spending such a long time on these futile efforts, he finally cut off the soul force. The remaining seals in the air trembled, and then detonated in a succession of brilliant sparkles. Looking at the beautiful brilliance, Lin Ming felt a stabbing pain in his heart. This was money. This was all his money. Although he didn't expect the first time to be successful, but losing so much gold was hard on him. 
The only silver lining was that he had not arrived at the stage where he had to use his most rare and expensive material, the skyworm silk. His leftover material was about enough for ten more attempts. If he was unable to complete an inscription before then, then he would be dead broke and unable to continue any further. Any other inscription master would have listened to his thoughts and coughed blood. Wanting to succeed in ten more attempts. What a fantasy. This was his first time attempting inscription, let alone completing an inscription in the next time tries, a normal inscription student would have trouble even drawing up a successful line. Lin Ming gathered the residual ashes of the materials, and began to recount his mistakes from a moment ago. The memories he inherited from the elder weren't wrong, but it was just that the gap of soul force between them was simply too vast. Even a simple inscription he might not be able to complete. These inscription techniques in the elder's memory may have been considered simple and light by him, but in the sky spill continent it was still an incomparably complicated godly technique. Once drawn, even the inscription masters of this land would be shocked. After summarizing the reasons for his failure, Lin Ming began to plot countermeasures. He couldn't enhance his own soul force in such a short time, but what he could do was minimize the mistakes he made as much as possible. It was simply because each mistake was a waste of soul force. If he made less mistakes, then he would not only have more materials and thus money, but more soul force to use. Thinking like this, Lin Ming gave up using materials and instead only practiced his soul force again and again like an unthinking zombie. His idea was very simple. Using soul force was free and it was easy on the body. If he practiced the true primal chaos formula, well, then he wouldn't lose anything, but would also be able to practice at the same time. What could possibly be more perfect? It was as if these two were made for each other. As long as he didn't waste any money, then he had no fears. It didn't matter if he practiced 100 times. If that wasn't enough he would practice 1000 times. If that wasn't enough he would practice 10,000 times, or 100,000 times or even a million times until the process became a reflex, and then he wouldn't believe that he would fail again. Sky Fortune City. Marshall's Quarters. In Sky Fortune City, two complexes were considered the most grandiose and splendid architectural achievements, the Imperial Palace, and the Marshall's Quarters, which was situated in the Sky Fortune City's northwest corner. The Marshall Quarter was three miles long from tip to toes, and it was a thousand steps wide. There were rocky waterfalls with beautiful flowers, and a winding corridor garden, along with countless waterside pavilions. It truly was breathtaking. Right now, in the Marshall Quarter's library pavilion, was an elderly man wearing a long gown and carrying a gold-gilded bird cage. Next to him stood a peaceful-looking girl in white, it was Qin Xingxuan. Oh, so there is something like that out there. Even you were humbly defeated by him. Him. Qin Xingxuan politely nodded. The old man was her master, Sky Fortune City's most prestigious and famous inscription master, Mr. Muyi. Qin Xingxuan had a very good memory. She completely recounted the events that happened, even every word of Lin Ming's. After the old man listened, his expression grew increasingly dignified. At first he assumed his young student was in love and being modest about some boy she liked, but it seemed she really was inferior. Moreover, that youth's knowledge was too rich and experienced. It wasn't likely to come from someone in the Sky Fortune Kingdom, but instead some ancient master from another, more developed land. After she finished, she also described how Lin Ming drew up the foundation lines and symbols with such ease and fluidity. It wasn't something that she was capable of doing being able to draw the foundation lines with soul force, but also not stopping and still being able to grasp the intricacies of energy of each point. What is this? Mu Yi said with surprise. Him. Mu Yi inhaled. He had always dreamt of performing this so-called drawing by instinct, but one need millions, if not billions of attempts to even think of it. Did this young boy start practicing while he was still kicking around in his mother's stomach? You really know that he is 15 or 16 years old? Yes. Qin Xingxuan replied with certainty. Marvelous, marvelous. Mu Yi sighed, such a small age and he is already this accomplished. It truly is amazing. This is the first time in my life seeing such a heaven-defying young talent. I thought I'd only hear of geniuses like this in legends. But I'm even more curious who this boy's master would be. Mu Yi thought in vain. In his mind he considered the entire Sky Fortune Kingdom, and even several nearby countries, but he could not think of any hidden inscription master that could compare with this elder. Even though Mu Yi could not think of anyone, 
In terms of inscription knowledge he was considered the forefront expert in the Sky Fortune Kingdom, and even in neighboring countries he would be well compared to their own inscription masters. But compared to this mysterious elder, he could not say that he had any chance of winning. Muyi said, I cannot think of anyone who is capable of teaching such a talented disciple. But if I ventured a guess, then the young boy's master might have come from some ancient clan. Ancient clan. Qin Xinghuan startled. Sky Spill Continent was vastly large, and had many thousands or millions of years of traditions of ancient clans. These clans had incomparably deep and profound heritages and legacies. For instance, just the most recent clan of Sky Fortune Kingdom had established the Seven Profound Martial House. They were the Seven Profound Valleys. They likely had their own secret masters and legacies. Twelve years ago, the Seven Profound Valley's elders arrived at Sky Fortune Kingdom, and even the Imperial family had to be respectful. Qin Xingxuan's master, Mr. Muyi, was considered the top inscription master in the country, but to the large clans, he wasn't anything special. Muyi said, Xingxuan, if you see him next time, be sure to ask him to stay so I can personally introduce myself. This youth isn't so simple. Even if he has a master that comes from some ancient clan, for him to have this degree of ability is simply heaven-defying in this day and age. Also, be polite to him and treat him with respect. His master is a person of inconceivably skill which the entire Sky Fortune capital cannot disrespect, neither can we afford to offend. Yes, master, as the day passed, Lin Ming tore down another calendar page. Lin Ming had been practicing inscription every day. Every sort of symbol and line and rune had been practiced God knows how many times, and each was thoroughly imprinted in his heart. Using soul force day and night was very tiring to his spirit and mind, so his eyes were always red with exhaustion. His true essence had long been wrung dry. He was constantly like a lamp without any oil, but he had gained some benefits. Lin Ming discovered that besides the progress in his inscription technique, his perception had become increasingly sensitive. Now he's still deboning in the Great Clarity Pavilion, but even if it were a second-level vicious beast, Lin Ming could easily perceive the entire structure of the beast, and avoid the bones, and let his knife would smoothly follow through the solid flesh of a second-level vicious beast. Lin Ming needed only an incense worth of time to completely finish. At such a monstrous speed, the Great Clarity Pavilion's staffs were astonished at first and didn't believe, but after seeing they became numb to disbelief. Now in the Great Clarity Pavilion, Lin Ming had a much higher status. His work hours were optional and even rush hour was optional. His wages were no less than those of master chefs. With such treatment, any employee would be satisfied. And although Lin Ming was privileged, he still kept deboning two hours per day. It was also a form of practice to him. Deboning was a good way to take advantage of the soul force utilization. However, Lin Ming soon found himself not being able to work the two hours. There just weren't enough vicious beasts in the entirety of the Great Clarity Pavilion. Indeed, all the storehouse stocked goods were already sliced and prepped by Lin Ming. When Sister Lan, who was responsible for checking the kitchen daily, went to the ice storehouse, she saw that all the vicious beasts had been turned into neat piles of meat and bone. Not only that but each piece was uniform in size and marbling. Sister Lan was naturally speechless. This young boy was simply a machine. Finally, it was the last ten days of the first month. Lin Ming had prepared his mind and prepared the materials. It was time to start the inscription once again. Chapter 15. Overwhelming Symbol. Today, Lin Ming had prepared as well as he possibly could. Solely in the tracing of the lines and symbols, he was no less than those lofty masters. Manipulating the sky wind grass juice, Lin Ming opened both his hands and a single drop of emerald liquid flew into the air where it steadily remained. Looking at this liquid green pearl, Lin Ming closed his eyes as his hands flashed and formed a series of seals. These movements had long ago been printed in his mind, and along with memories of the soul fragment, these complex signs were as instinctual as breathing. With a deep breath, Lin Ming began. His ten fingers flowed like a branches in a storm, and they even collided with each other as his speed of seal formation was too fast. His fingers blurred as another drop of liquid from a different material flew into the air. With his soul force at full strength, Lin Ming rapidly formed the beautiful and mysterious inscription symbols. In order to preserve his soul force, Lin Ming had started working on another material before the first had finished. 
In this high-intensity and highly complicated plan, Lin Ming's error rate was low extremely low. When the inscription was half-finished, Ming began to feel the strain. When the inscription was two-thirds complete, Lin Ming felt that his soul force was reaching its end, and he began to revolve the true primal chaos formula. With that on his mind, the chance that a problem would arise also increased. Lin Ming clenched his teeth and pressed on. He still had to divide the several materials to use them to draw the final rune. Sky Worm Silk has completed. The tense Lin Ming finally let loose a breath of relief. Sky Worm Silk was what he lacked the most. He could now allow for failure here. There are five runes. Lin Ming counted the number in his heart as his soul force reached the limit. Four, three, two, success. Lin Ming finished the inscription at this moment. The sparkling runes shined and flashed for a brief moment as they coalesced into an inscription the size of a square inch. It hung there suspended in air. Lin Ming had almost collapsed, but as he looked at this completed inscription floating in air, he felt nothing but absolute joy. This small inscription was like his precious child. He had spent a month of inhuman suffering and massive amounts of money to raise it up. The elder had named this inscription the overwhelming symbol. This title was a tad too vulgar and childish, but stemming from the respect that Lin Ming held for this elder in his heart, he did not change its name. It was the overwhelming symbol. Lin Ming had bought 15 of the cheapest symbol papers at one to two tails of gold per dozen. With just a slight bit of soul force, the overwhelming symbol fell onto the symbol paper. Gold lines converged to form ancient runes on the symbol paper. The symbol paper truly was plain, and the overall effect made it look bland and unremarkable. At the last minute of forming the symbol paper, Lin Ming changed the outwards design appearance with his soul force. It resembled a flame pattern. This kind of design left on the inscription treasures would become a sign. His sign. Many inscription masters had their own personalized designs as a mark of their work. Lin Ming decided on flames, as flames represented rebirth into nirvana. Cultivating a martial path was a trial by fire. Pain was constant, and danger was ever-present. Traveling down this path would burn one into ashes. Only those that have firm hearts and immeasurable wills would be able to be rebirthed through the flames, and become a dragon or phoenix that ascends like a god into the skies. Lin Ming carefully received this precious symbol paper. He opened the window and the fresh air and bright sunlight sprinkled down on him and reflected on his bloodshot eyes. He was bone tired with exhaustion and wanted to go to sleep right away, but Lin Ming had an unprecedented sense of satisfaction. Time left before the seven profound martial houses exam, two months and ten days. In the past five days Lin Ming had branded his last inscription onto the symbol paper. Thus, all his materials had been thoroughly exhausted. He had managed to altogether create four copies of the overwhelming symbol. Looking at these symbol papers, Lin Ming has an unforgettable sense of achievement. Now he wanted to sell these four symbol papers. At the last trade fair, Master Bai Hong's engraved inscription had sold for 1500 tails of gold. Clearly this was affected by the renown of the inscription master. Lin Ming had not sold any inscriptions before so he was not famous or well known, but he was confident in his work. This inscription came from the realm of the gods. Its effect compared to that of Master Bai Hong's work was like the heavens and earth. There was simply no comparison. In that elder's memory, the overwhelming symbol was merely the most basic inscription, but it was enough to use on a superior piece of equipment, a third grade piece of equipment. If used on lower grade equipment, then the effect would increase by at least 60%. Not only that, but the overwhelming symbol also granted equipment an additional skill. Some top tier inscription techniques can add additional skills to equipment. By concentrating soul force, it was possible to use these skills. They ranged from energy attacks, armor increasing shields, illusionary techniques, to demonic techniques and more. Lin Ming's inscription, if engraved on a weapon, would give that weapon a skill called the instant violent strike. The small inscription rune was in fact a complex array. When the user concentrated a massive amount of soul force into the weapon, the inscription would absorb this energy, compress it to the limit, and then instantly erupt. In a close combat battle, this move was truly formidable in its lethality. Lin Ming didn't actually believe his inscription was as amazing as the ones he recounted in the elders' memories. There was also definitely no way for a piece of equipment to achieve a 60% increase in power at his current level. As for that, 
instant violent strike. Lin Mind did not know if it actually would work because the inscription technique was too complex. After making the end product, all those runes and symbols were concentrated in that tiny inscription so it was difficult for even the creator to judge the ability of the end product. There were just too many possible structures, and a corresponding number of possible mistakes. In the worst case scenario, the weapon might even blow up. As long as there was the tiniest of problems, the entire inscription would have to be sold at great discount. Lin Ming finally had a night of full rest, and slept blissfully until the early morning. His soul force and energy were in peak condition. He asked Lin Xiodong for some trade fairs and auction house addresses, and then departed with his symbol papers. He had bought some new clothes included a hooded cape that covered his face. Although the trade fairs and auction houses always had a good reputation for safety, and wouldn't leak the identity of patrons, it was best to be careful. After all, if the four symbol papers were sold for any high price, then if that person were known, they might rob and kill them for their possessions. Lin Ming first went to the official Sky Fortune City auction hall. There were many auction halls in Sky Fortune City, and there wasn't one that stood out among the rest, so he chose one with a slightly better reputation. As long as these four symbol papers sold, he would be able to purchase the materials for medicine. However, as Lin Ming approached the auction house, he thought that it was just too simple. Chapter 16. Frustration. The auction house had an extremely strict review process, in particular concerning the goods they sold. Otherwise fakes and replicas would be managed to get through and the reputation of the auction house would suffer a loss. To an auction house, reputation was everything. A middle-aged man greeted Lin Min, to be more exact, blocked him, and asked, Sir, is there anything I can help you with? Lin Ming was wearing a clean and crisp robe and he looked like any other well-to-do citizen. However, his height was shorter than an adult male by several inches. In addition, his voice had not yet fully matured, so it wasn't possible to cover up the fact that he was a young boy of only 15 or 16 years. Therefore Lin Ming simply said with his own voice, I'm here for an appraisal of inscription runes. Oh, the middle-aged man looked at Lin Ming somewhat suspiciously. Can I see your inscription? In fact, this man's manners were already very polite. A 15 to 16 year old coming into the auction house to appraise some inscriptions was already strange. The price frequently rose to over a thousand tails of gold. Most people would have well-founded suspicions that this was a practical joke. After Lin Ming pulled out the symbol paper, the middle-aged man frowned as he noticed the shoddy quality of it. This was the most basic and cheap symbol paper that was available on the market at one or two tails of gold for a dozen. Although the cost of the symbol paper did not affect the quality of the inscription, it was still a sign of the inscription master's status. Naturally they would never use this kind of symbol paper. They would normally use high-quality symbol paper that cost several tails of gold each, to show off the results of their inscription. However, there was a faint energy which emitted from the symbol paper, and the middle-aged man was able to determine that this was a complete and real product, not a practical joke. He looked at Lin Ming and asked, do you have some sort of certificate stating which inscription master created this? Lin Ming shook his head. Well all right, come with me. The middle-aged man led Lin Ming through the hallway to an appraisal room at the back of the auction house. The man in the appraisal chamber wore an inlined black garment, and looked to be a harsh grandfather in his fifties or sixties. Lin Ming also noted the sign in front of the man that wrote, Advanced Appraiser. The black-robed man took this symbol paper in hand, and noted that the inscription was placed on inferior paper, but he didn't reveal any expression that indicated he was disgusted or skeptical. Instead, he maintained a tranquil and calm demeanor, and quietly slipped on a pair of white gloves and invested his full attention towards an earnest and practical appraisal of the work. This demonstrated that he was a true professional. However, the appraiser only just began when he raised his head, his face slightly more serious, and looked at Lin Ming. If I'm not wrong, the one who created this inscription symbol, his strength should not exceed the third level of the body transformation stage. The inscription symbol would always carry a slight hint of the maker's soul force. It was possible for an appraiser to judge the creator's martial arts cultivation level through these traces. Since Lin Ming created the inscription paper, the soul force trace would naturally be weak, but since he practiced the overwhelming, true primal chaos formula, the soul force was much thicker than the average martial artists. If the appraiser knew that the inscription was created by a mere boy at the first level of the body transformation stage, 
his chin would surely drop to the ground. Lin Ming knew that there was no way to deny this, so he nodded. The only man sharply inhaled, and then sighed, to think there was such a talent within the young generation. A trivial little third-level body transformation cultivation can draw an inscription symbol. It is shocking. Usually, the inscription masters tended to be of the older generation, and most were above the bone forging boundary. Many even broke through the pulse condensing boundary and some even at the pre-celestial boundary. Perhaps this third level body transformation was just an inscription master's apprentice, and happened to get lucky and create a successful inscription. However this boy brought in four of the same inscription, which was truly amazing. Lin Ming heard the old man's praise and thought things were going well, but he didn't expect the old man to change his mind. It is a complete and real inscription symbol, but the creator is only an apprentice. Therefore we are unable to identify the increase in strength that would provide or the integrity of the inscription. You must know that an apprentice's soul force is generally limited in quantity and quality, and it is very difficult to complete the myriad and complicated inscription designs. Even if the symbol increased the strength by 10%, if it cannot be placed onto superior equipment, then we cannot auction this as failed product would harm the auction house's reputation. Inscriptions were used only on superior equipment, because only superior equipment was sturdy and strong enough to concentrate the soul force and energy of martial artists in battle. Since the inscriptions modified soul force, it needed to be at least that level. Therefore, the lowest quality goods that someone would place an inscription on were at least several thousand gold tails. This equipment was not something the average person was able to obtain. Even the juniors of aristocratic families had to cultivate to at least the altering muscle or bone forging level to even be considered for having such a high quality weapon. For instance, Wang Yigao had an excellent family background. But because his cultivation was low, even though he had used a fine blue sword, it did not necessarily mean it was a treasure. That blue sword was only 200 tails of gold. The number of times that you can engrave on a weapon was limited. Essentially, it was only one time. After an inscription, another cannot be placed on. Thinking about it, who would spend several thousand tails of gold on a weapon, only to place on it an inscription of dubious origin. Therefore the inscription market for apprentices was non-existent. Lin Ming had expected this result and said, I only need to auction three, the last you can use for experiments. After the inscription is made, it is too difficult to test the result. Even the creator can only guesstimate its effectiveness. When a martial artist purchased an inscription, he was basically gambling on his luck. So high-level inscription masters were well received because they had the reputation to guarantee the effectiveness of their products. Very few people would purchase an unknown master's inscriptions, much less an apprentice's. It was just gambling with their own precious money. The appraiser said, of course. However, the experiment needs to be done with your own equipment. Lin Ming suddenly turned silent. A weapon worth several thousand gold tails. He supposed it was impossible for the auction house to casually put up a weapon worth several thousand gold tails to test as an experiment. If Lin Ming were an inscription master, then things might have been different, because the masters have reputations and wouldn't need have their inscriptions tested. Moreover, the auction house would be happy to be on good terms with such a figure and even provide their own weapons. At Lin Ming's moment of highest worth, he only had 800 tails of gold. Where would he get a weapon that was worth several thousand tails of gold to engrave an inscription on? He did not bother arguing or saying anything else. He could have said that there was no way their equipment would have suffered a loss, but there was no reason to believe him, because the soul force on the inscription really was too weak. So Lin Ming took his four symbol papers and turned around to leave the Sky Fortune official auction house. Sorry, but we need proof that the inscription association provides, or a signed notary provided to the inscription master. At the Sky Fortune City Trade Fair, the merchant had directly rejected Lin Ming after seeing his age. This was a polite rejection. Afterwards Lin Ming went to several private shops and the attitudes of these people were even worse. He tried the inscription transaction trading pavilion that was under the jurisdiction of the Allied Trade Association. The store was opulent and luxurious with six floors, each filled with high-class establishments and boasted an air of refinement. Everything was expensive nothing was cheap. The goods ranged from a few hundred to several thousand gold tails. Even the shopkeepers were needlessly arrogant. If a rich young master came, then they would be polite and offer tea, kind words, and never-ending bootlicking. 
but for the poor salesman, they received nothing but a straight boot to the rear. Some did not even bother saying anything, and just waved him away impatiently. Look kid, don't make trouble here, you're blocking my good business. Hi cutie, how much for the night? Ha ha this old lady is just playing with you. But really, hey you, this isn't a place where a little boy should come to. Oh, hey customer, what do you need? Come see, ha ha, child, don't try to tease me here, I've already laughed today. This is just toilet paper, and you drew some small flames on this toilet paper. Did you think it was an inscription? Ha ha. Chapter 17. Lan Yunyu. In the span of an entire day, Lin Ming had visited two auction houses, a trade fair, and also five treasure trading pavilions that were set up by respectable families, and yet he hadn't found a buyer. As he returned to the Great Clarity Pavilion, Lin Ming sighed. He hadn't expected that selling a few inscriptions would be so difficult. However, this was just a little setback. The dismissive taunts and jeers had no effect on Lin Ming, whose pain and suffering from cultivating martial arts had exceeded any psychological pain he would experience by several times. Even if it was Zhu Yan taunting him about Lan Yunyu, his poor family background, his lower cultivation, none of these could affect Lin Ming's heart of martial arts. He placed away the symbol papers and began to practice the true primal chaos formula. Alter he had practiced the inscription techniques every day this month. He still managed to eke out some time to practice the true primal chaos formula. Now, with his hard work, the true primal chaos formula had already finished the entirety of the first level. His own martial arts cultivation was also at the peak of the first level of body transformation. With the strength of nine stones and a fist that can shatter iron wood, this was proof he was at the peak of body transformation's first level, strength training. Nine stones was equivalent to 900 jinns. This was the peak of body transformation's first level. But the reality was Lin Ming's present strength was no less than a thousand jinns. This was due to the influence that the chaotic virtues combat meridians had on his training, and not only that but his strength was increasing daily. Yet, Lin Ming was actually still stuck in the first level of body transformation. After he circulated his soul force with the true primal chaos formula, Lin Ming began to focus on his understandings of bones. His own deboning time had already reached an extremely high degree of proficiency and speed. Even a second level vicious beast was not enough to satisfy his practice requests. Unfortunately, even at the Great Clarity Pavilion, level 3 vicious beasts were very rare. Lin Ming wanted to practice on these rare beasts but was unable to. So he thought of an idea, and began to instead use the flat back of the knife to debone. Normally, someone who was deboning who would the sharpest knife they could, or even an axe or any other sharp instrument. Deboning would also often take the entirety of a day to finish a second level vicious beast. But Lin Ming actually used the very thick back of a knife to debone. It was absurdly difficult and impossible. The knife felt as if it were cutting into solid rock, and every inch required an extreme degree of effort and strength. This was forcing Lin Ming to constantly be exhausting his physical ability to the limit while perceiving the skill. Before, it took more time to eat a bowl of rice than to debone a second level vicious beast completely, but now two hours still wasn't enough time to finish. Even after he did, he was soaked in sweat. Thankfully the results were still good and he neatly cut off the slabs of meat as he had before. If Great Clarity Pavilion knew that Lin Ming was finishing deboning these second level vicious beasts with just the back of a knife, they would not only check Lin Ming into the nearest hospital, but would also check themselves in. After a night of practice, Lin Ming was weary to his bones. He had completely forgotten about the inscription matters and directly fell asleep. After a night of deep rest, Lin Ming awoke before daybreak and headed to his secret place at the Zhou Mountains to practice his martial arts. With strike after strike, the sun began to rise into the sky. At this time, a young boy approached from the glade. He was a tall, healthy-looking boy dressed in white. Brother Lin, why did you ask me yesterday where to sell inscription symbols? Did you really finish engraving some? This boy was precisely Lin Xiodong. Yesterday around this time, Lin Ming had asked him and he had answered without thinking. But after thinking about it more and more, he realized that there is no way that Lin Ming should have been able to create any inscriptions. Although Lin Xiodong did not have a deep understanding of inscription, he still knew it was impossible for Lin Ming to create a complete inscription symbol. It was likely some shoddy or half-finished product, 
and if he brought something like that to the trade fair to sell, then the merchants would likely have had him beaten up for being some swindler. Lin Ming smiled and nodded, I finished some. Lin Xiaodong's heart tightened, you brought him to sell. Him, but I didn't sell any. It was expected that he hadn't sold any. These merchants weren't fools. Lin Xiaodong sized up his friend with a bit of worry. His puppy dog eyes were filled with anxiety as he asked, Brother Lin, you weren't beat up were you? Lin Ming was stunned silent. This little brother of his truly had a wild imagination. He burst out laughing and clapped his friend on the shoulder, I really did finish the inscription symbols, and I'm not some second-hand swindler, why would I be beat up? As he said this he took out the four symbol papers which he had labored over the past month and showed him to Lin Xiaodong. He didn't want him to worry over him. However, as soon as Lin Xiaodong saw these four symbol papers, his face immediately stiffened in horror. The appearances of these symbol papers were truly terrible to look at. He guessed that Lin Ming's inscriptions might be second rate, or even defective, but this was just too much. The paper was thick yellow. It just had the appearance of toilet paper that was used too many times. Only a fool would buy it. Lin Xiaodong had seen several symbol papers by inscription masters before and they were always on bright, clean sheets with shimmering colors. Lin Xiaodong looked as if he had eaten spoiled porridge. He let out a dry smile. Oh brother of mine, sweet brother of mine. He did not have the nerve to embarrass Lin Ming, who was probably suffering. He could only think of the several hundred tales of material that had become overused toilet paper. Lin Xiaodong's heart was in immediate pain. This really was a waste of money. Lin Ming noticed Lin Xiaodong's expression had changed, and he could guess what he was thinking at the moment. He simply put the symbol papers away. There just wasn't any way he could adequately explain this to Lin Xiaodong in a way that he would understand. Brother Lin, I must say with your talent and effort, you will break through the pulse condensation period sooner or later. Why bother with this? Lin Xiaodong decided to try the carrot approach to persuade his good friend. The stick obviously had not worked. Lin Ming smiled and stayed silent. Lin Xiaodong wasn't wrong. Even if he didn't bother with inscription, it was only a matter of time until he reached the pulse condensation phase. Even the Hushan phase or even the fabled Xianshan phase wouldn't be too difficult but cultivating the martial path was a daily struggle, and time waited for no man. If he didn't improve his cultivation as fast as he could while he was young, it would only become increasingly difficult with age. If he didn't use special medicines or magical objects and only relied on his own diligent efforts, even if he had a solid foundation it would still take a massive amount of time. Time that Lin Ming could not afford to spend. Therefore he needed to make money using the inscription technique and take as many shortcuts as he could. He said, Xiaodong, you head back first, I still have some matters to attend to. Matters. Brother Lin, you aren't thinking of selling these symbol papers are you? Lin Ming laughed and said with a smile, don't worry about it too much, I already know how things are. As he said this, Lin Ming had already passed several dozens of meters into the distance. Fuck. Lin Xiaodong saw Lin Ming had disappeared and could only curse at his back. He knew Lin Ming had decided on his course and he couldn't change it. Brother of mine, oh brother of mine, please be careful. Although Lin Ming's truly had the firm will and aspirations, some things were beyond even the control of the heavens. Although there were many shops in Sky Fortune City, the number that had the qualifications to sell inscription symbols weren't many. Including the auction houses and trade fairs, altogether there were less than 30. Within these, Lin Ming had already visited most of them and without an exception had been rejected from all of them. It was just that he was only an apprentice. Occasionally an apprentice would luck out and create a complete product, but no one would want to waste their precious weapons on such a dubious product. Lin Ming was a tad disappointed by this setback, but it didn't affect him. In his mind he knew that he only needed some more time and he would see the fruits of his labor. You want to sell us this inscription on consignment? Are you kidding me little boy? You're so young and yet you want to do something so dishonest. This simply cannot be sold. Go, go and do not delay me in doing business. You are blocking the way. The storekeeper of Hundred Treasure Hall impatiently waved him away. The manners of private shop owners were always worse than the more professional auction houses. Lin Ming didn't take this too hard, but as he turned around he saw a familiar face. It was an extremely beautiful face, but one he was also reluctant to see. Not too far from him were two girls wearing light yellow dresses. 
One of them was the one who had missed their promise meeting a few months ago, and had accompanied Zhu Yan to go to the Seven Profound Martial House, Lan Yunyu. Lan Yunyu had also just arrived, and she looked down at the four sloppy symbol papers in Lin Ming's hand, and thought about the words that the storekeeper had just said. Her dewy complexion changed. Lan Yunyu had not seen inscription symbol papers before, but even if she had she would not connect those fabled objects to these rough papers in Lin Ming's hand. She guessed Lin Ming was reselling goods. Some goods didn't cost much, and they would try to buy up such things and sell them at the more common, lower-end markets for the price difference. This kind of work had low profits, and above all, it wasn't work one could hold their head high to. Also, Lin Ming's family was not rich, and he had to support the expenses of cultivating martial arts along with daily expenses for living. He must have been short on money recently, and therefore tried whatever he could. With that thought there, Lan Yunyu sighed. She did not know if she should say anything in this situation. She felt as if anything she said might possibly injure Lin Ming's dignity, but she also couldn't pretend that she had not seen him. By now the storekeeper had seen Lan Yunyu, and his ugly mug immediately smiled in welcome. From the past to now, it was as if he were a completely different person. This young lady, what goods were you looking to purchase? Yesterday you bought a sword. Was it easy to use? Oh yes. And how about that young master that accompanied you yesterday, did you come together? I don't see him. It was obvious the storekeeper's mention of young master was referring to Zhu Yan. Seeing that smile on the storekeeper's face, Lin Ming also knew that the last time Zhu Yan had come here with Lan Yunyu, the storekeeper had made a fortune. Lan Yunyu didn't think that the storekeeper would mention Zhu Yan at this time, which only made the situation more awkward and tense. She wanted to explain that she hadn't done anything with Zhu Yan, but she held the words on the tip of her tongue. Her face paled and she steeled herself. She was not a little girl anymore, and she had to be clear about these things. Sooner or later she would marry into the Zhu family, and although she did not like Zhu Yan, but for her goals, she had caved into her destiny and had chosen the path of betrayal. After a little more tense awkwardness, Lan Yunyu asked in a low voice, It's been a while. Have you been well? All right, Lin Ming replied calmly. What was in the past was in the past, he did not wish to dwell on these matters. All right, if you were truly all right, then how could you be there? A 15-year-old boy suffering from the pain of cultivation, while also having to worry about his own livelihood, and experiencing the derision of others. Was this really okay? Lan Yunyu knew Lin Ming's stubbornness, but seeing his appearance like this, she could only urge, you had not thought to turn back. Turn back, turn back to where? Ha ha, are you telling me to give up on martial arts? I am not saying that. I am only saying that cultivating martial arts is dangerous to the body. If you don't have enough money to buy medicine, then it is easy to suffer permanent disability. Lan Yunyu sighed, and her gaze fell on the symbol papers in Lin Ming's hand. Money you make from reselling some small goods is not enough to support the needs of martial arts cultivation. I do not think that you have suffered from anything yet. I know that you are unwilling to listen, but I do not want to think that later in life, the only thing you'll be doing is lying down on a bed. Hearing her heartfelt words, Lin Ming smiled and said, Thank you for the advice, but I won't give up. I will never give up. He lifted his hand and pointed at the beautiful burning flame image on the symbol paper and said, The path of the martial artist is like this flame. Practicing the martial arts will only cause pain. The dangers are countless and the road is filled with obstacles. Everyone who walks down it will eventually turn to ash, but the true martial artist will be reborn from these ashes. Even if I was only a small and weak moth, I will walk into the flames without hesitation. I will fight my destiny for a one in a million chance that I will experience my own samsara and be reborn into a flaming phoenix. And even now, I am no longer a moth. Lin Ming spoke those words with a faint smile. He put away his symbol papers and quietly departed, leaving only the silhouette of his lonely, but proud back. Lin Ming left the Hundred Treasures Hall like a moth to the light. This was his heart of martial arts. This was his Tao. He will persevere until the day he reaches Nirvana. He will not rest until that day that he would soar into the skies. Chapter 18. Sold. Lin Ming's last stop was the Red Maple Auction House. Lin Ming did not entertain any ideas of success, and as he thought, the auction house's beautiful auctioneer had come out herself to turn him down. However, this beautiful lady felt that Lin Ming had been treated a bit unfairly, 
so she gave him two suggestions. First, he should try the inscription association. Perhaps they would be interested in purchasing his symbol papers for collection or educative uses. Normally an apprentice-level inscription symbol was relatively rare because of the low success ratio, but Lin Ming had four, so it was even more so. Secondly, he could try heading to the city square and peddling his goods there. Lin Ming had not gone to the inscription association before. He did not have the credentials of a genuine inscription master, and even a top-tier inscription master would be unable to see the mysteries behind Lin Ming's inscriptions. The difference between Sky Fortune Kingdom's inscription technique and those of the Realm of the Gods was simply too large. The only thing Lin Ming could do was to go to the city square center, and hope to sell his symbol papers there. Unfortunately, it was impossible to get a decent price. Although the city square was a lower tier trading center, it was still an official establishment propped up by the government. In here there were a variety of goods that could be sold on commission. The trading center would take in 5%. But the reputation of the center was well known, and there wasn't a fear of being cheated, so many people chose to do that. The quality threshold to enter the trading center was low. As long as it was genuine and not a knockoff, then any goods could be sold at reasonable prices. Lin Ming's inscription symbols were naturally the real deal. This no one could deny, but it was just an apprentice's work, so the value was low. After the trading center's appraiser examined his goods, the fat man offered him a starting price of 100 gold tails. Hearing this number, Lin Ming could only be stunned into silence. Your sister, what is this? The materials for the inscription cost 7 to 800 gold tails, and the trading center offered 100 gold tails for one. If he sold it at 100 gold tails, Lin Ming would only receive 400 gold tails. So do you want to sell or not? Lin Ming clenched his teeth, yes, I will sell. I'll sell too. Lin Ming had recently spent all his money. If it weren't for the large salary and good conditions of the Great Clarity Pavilion, he would have been starving on the streets. Even if it was selling at a loss, he could accept selling too. As for the other two, he would just wait a period. His heart wasn't willing to sell the last two at 100 tails of gold each. Leave your address behind, the fat appraiser said. The trading center was responsible for the sale of commission items only. Only when people have bought the item would they be paid. For Lin Ming, these two inscription symbols also didn't have a certainty to sell. A low rental is one gold tail, a medium rental is three gold tails, and a high rental is five gold tails for a lease of one month. If after that time period the item is unable to sell, the item goes off the shelf and the money is not refunded. The fat appraiser said, fuck, even this required money, his luck was really dog shit. He turned his head and thought about it. The high rent was obviously the best, followed by the medium rent. The low rental was probably some shady corner where no one would see his items. Lin Ming fished out five gold tails from his pockets, and slapped three gold tails on the able, I'll take the medium rent. To think that matters would come to this. The inscription was without a doubt no worse than a master's, but now it sold for 100 tails of gold only and he also had to pay 5% taxes along with a rental fee. And it also depended on whether someone bought his items. Lin Ming sighed. It really was difficult being unknown. He placed the two gold tails back into his pocket and forced a smile. Let alone buying any rare medicines to cultivate his martial arts, he would be lucky if there was enough food to put on the table. Without the medicines and without any other materials, Lin Ming did not feel right asking his good brother Lin Xiodong to borrow money. Therefore he stayed in the Zhou Mountains and practiced the true primal chaos formula. The days passed one by one like this. Already seven days had gone. The city square trading center had always been a bustling place. Some people with good judgment would come here and window shop for some rare goods that were misplaced at a lesser price. It was a rewarding feeling to find a hidden treasure. However, these people would not normally look at medicinal herbs or inscription symbols. It was just too difficult to see their quality, so they often skipped these items. Because of this hundreds and thousands of customers had come, but Lin Ming's inscription symbol calmly stayed on the shelf, as nobody asked for it. But today, a tall, brawny man with a large upper body came strolling into the trading center. His whole body was wrapped with thick muscles and he had a rugged appearance. He was simply an intimidating man. He carried a four-foot-long sword on his back, and walked proudly like a tiger that was looking for trouble. The person had cold eyes. 
His body was crisscrossed with scars. He was a man who had experienced countless life or death experiences. This man was a true killer. Those little boys who trained at the Marshall houses simply could not compare with his presence. Seeing this person, the fat appraiser shrank. This man was at the fifth level of body transformation. A powerhouse at the peak of bone forging. This person was only a step away from the pulse condensation period. But this one step had too many people who were unable to cross over in their entire lives. What does the customer wish to buy? The fat appraiser stood up and greeted. The man did not say a single word and just looked around, so tactfully the appraiser also remained silent. The man looked around the store and it didn't seem like anything caught his interest, until suddenly, he pointed at two yellow slips of paper that were pressed between panes of glass. This is the inscription symbol. Yes, it's 100 gold tails. The man said with a hint of surprise. The usual inscription symbol cost more than a 1,000 gold tails. 100 gold tails really was cheap. The storekeeper said truthfully, this is the product of an inscription apprentice. His cultivation level is only at the third level of body transformation. The increased strength it offers is probably only up to 10%. 10%. The man frowned. This really was a low number. But alas, he could not afford to purchase inscription symbols worth more than 1,000 gold tails. This hero's name was Tai Fung. His background was common, and his salary was dependent on what the army provided for him. He had to provide for his elderly parents along with supplying his own medicine, so he could not spend any large amount of gold. Not even 1,000 gold tails, but even 100 was a pretty hefty price. One month ago, Tai Fung had accompanied the armed forces on an expedition and had taken the head of the enemy leader, who was also at the bone forging stage. He took his sword as the spoils of war. This sword was a treasure of the human steppe. The army's rules were that treasures earned were one's own. Like this, Tai Fung obtained a treasured sword. However, the sword had been damaged. The sword's tip had broken off. This incomplete treasure could only display a limited effect. When the martial artist concentrated his soul force in the weapon, because the sword was incomplete, the combat strength was also lowered. Moreover, Tai Fung was also disappointed that the sword did not have an inscription symbol, so its strength is even lower by level. Tai Fung did not think of engraving an inscription on it, as he was unable to afford the high price, and also because the sword was damaged, so one could say it was unworthy of something like an inscription symbol. But seeing this inscription symbol from an apprentice, he began to see the appeal of it. Generally a symbol that increased the strength by 30% would take about 1500 gold tails. But this only increased a weapon by 10%, so the price was only 100 gold tails. The ratio of effectiveness to cost was high, but more importantly, he could afford it. Tomorrow was the third round of the army's martial arts tournament. His next opponent was a pretty difficult one. If he could raise his sword strength by just a bit, then his chances of winning would be much higher. The tournament was required by all martial artists within 30 years of age. If one had a great result, they would obtain great rewards, or even a promotion in military rank. Tai Fung's military exploits had already accumulated throughout the years. If he showed great results this time, he might even be raised to captain of 10,000 men. Moreover he wanted the rewards. Ten years ago his mother had picked herbal medicines so he could continue practicing his martial arts and had fallen off a cliff and broken both her legs. She had been confined to a bed since. Tai Fung swore to the heavens that he would buy the rare medicine black jade paste for his mother. Black jade paste had the ability to heal broken bones if set properly. With it, he would be able to cure both his mother's legs, and she would be able to walk again. But the price of this rare medicine was 5,000 gold tails. To the him now, it was simply an unimaginable figure. With this in mind, Tai Fung must grasp victory with his own hands. Tomorrow was the third day of the tournament, and even Marshal Chin Seo would attend in person. He was the number one figure in the land. There was no way he could lose with so much on the line. For his family, for his mother, Tai Fung clenched his teeth and said to the storekeeper, this inscription symbol, I'll take it, no way, somehow, you managed to get back 95 tails of gold. Lin Xiodong looked at the banknote in Lin Ming's hand and couldn't believe it was real. He couldn't say what he thought in his mind, that some pitiful fool and spend 95 gold tails to purchase a piece of toilet paper. It's 92 gold tails. Lin Ming said. The city square's trading center was very quick in terms of money. 
The next day after the purchase they had handed over Lin Ming his profit. It was originally 100 gold tails, and after taking out 5%, and 3 gold tails for the rent, there was 92 gold tails left. An inscription symbol that should have had a minimum value of 1000 tails of gold only sold for 92. It really dumbfounded Lin Ming that the person who bought it profited so, but it was true that those who bought him took the risks. 90 tails of gold was not enough to buy any sort of rare medicine. It was only enough to buy the common kind that cured wounds. Lin Ming shrugged and went to the medicine shop to look for some materials. What he didn't know was that at this time in the armor grounds, there was a tournament of unmatched pomp and grand that was occurring, the Grand Assembly of Martial Artists. At the Ten Mile Grounds, wearing heavy iron armor under the blazing sun, 10,000 soldiers stood in a tight square formation. If one simply approached them they would feel the aura of war, as if they were drowning in some ancient battlefield as the god of death was galloping towards them. These were the Sky Fortune's kingdom's most superb warriors. Even picking out one randomly, it wasn't a joke to say that they could fight against ten other warriors. Opposite of these soldiers were rows of seats. At the center of this sat a man wearing golden armor. Although the thick hairs at his temple were already graying, his expression was bright, and his eyes were sharp like a falcon. He gave a feeling of infinite power, a hero among heroes. This was the man whose strength had swept away the eastern sun country 80 years ago, Marshal Chin Seo. His presence here showed how important this tournament was. The Chin family also came in attendance, including Chin Xingxuan and her master, Mr. Muyi. Muyi was already 100 years old. His cultivation had reached the middle stage of Hushan. He was also one of Sky Fortune highest masters, and was an inscription master. Even the king of Sky Fortune Kingdom had to treat him with respect. Besides the Chin family, there were also thousands of other military officials. Chapter 19. Muyi's Doubts. The Sky Fortune Kingdom held martial arts in high esteem, especially in the military. A tournament would be held every three years, for the selection of talents into higher positions, and to raise the fighting spirit of the martial warrior. The requirements for this tournament were that one had to be less than 30 years old and had achieved at least the third level of body transformation. Thousands of competitors would enter in, and after several tests and three rounds, only 50 would remain. Now the third and final round of the competition was beginning. The competitors had gone through their rounds, and soon there would be only 50 remaining. This was the last battle. The contestants would put forth all their hidden abilities and fight with all their might. The stage would fill with the aura of a raging fire as each man made their last stand. However, the start of the competition had not caused the higher-ups to pay much attention. The competitors on the field so far either had low strength, or too much of a disparity between them. It had reached the 20th round so far and there hadn't been any rousing fights. All Chin Seo cared about so far were the results. The competition now had two sides. One was the son of a general, a handsome 29-year-old man at the peak of bone forging. The past few years this man has gone on numerous missions and earned many medals and awards for his service. His strength had been strengthened by these events, and in his possession were even two treasures, a saber and a suit of armor. The saber also had an engraving on it from an inscription master. Its strength was no small matter. But on the other side was a birth soldier of humble origins. His name was Tai Fung. His talent wasn't outstanding, but he practiced diligently to the point it left one breathless. He was fearless in battle. Not even the threat of death could cause him to waver. He had killed many enemies and earned himself many merits, even more so than the general's child. Now, Tai Fung was also at the peak of bone forging. It was rare for two soldiers to have such a similar and high cultivation at their age. After slaughtering their enemies in the battlefield, in the future it was possible that they would enter the pulse condensation period and become pillars of the country. As the referee announced the two competitors, a silver emblazoned general smiled with happiness and gratification. The one going on stage was his son. Ha ha, old man Lee, your son really did you proud this time. Chin Seo smiled as he said this. This silver emblazoned general had once been under his command and they were old friends. Commander is too polite. This poor son of mine has grown up with many rare medicines and still hasn't shown much promise. He really isn't making an effort to succeed. Although the silver emblazoned general said this with deprecation, he couldn't conceal his smile. He was very satisfied and proud of his son. Hmm, 
This Tai Fung has had very good results, but he will find it difficult to win today. Chin Seo said so because of the difference in martial skills and the disparity in rare equipment. The silver emblazoned general's son had two rare treasures, and they also had the engraving of an inscription master to bolster their strength. This Tai Fung came from a humble background. Naturally he wouldn't have such things. This battle didn't seem fair, but Sky Fortune Kingdom's tournaments have always been so. Treasures and equipment were considered part of a soldier's inherent strength. In the midst of the battlefield, because of the disparity in equipment, if you were cut down by the enemy, could you then complain that it was unfair? It was impossible for the army to supply each soldier with rare equipment, thus as if a soldier wanted to prepare, then their family background also became a part of their strength, and even an important part. When Tai Fung came on stage, he drew out his four-foot sword. Chin Seo turned to Mu Yi who was sitting beside him. Mr. Mu Yi, is the Tai Fung sword also a treasure? Mu Yi stroked his beard and nodded, treasure indeed, but it is damaged. Oh, damaged. After Mu Yi said that, Chin Seo also saw that the sword missed the tip. It really was a damaged sword. Mu Yi said, damaged equipment is of course worse than a whole one. Not only that but it is Tai Fung's only treasure, whereas Li Qi has two. Their two levels of cultivation may be similar, but Tai Fung's martial skill manual is inferior to Li Qi's. This battle, Tai Fung will lose. Qin Xiao said, although he will lose, that this Tai Fung managed to get this far with a damaged sword is also amazing. If in this next battle he can manage to take 20 moves, I might promote into the army's martial hall. Xing Xuan, take a good look at this battle. You two will enter the fifth layer of body transformation. Although you practice a specialized martial skill for women, all creatures are the same, so if you watch carefully it will help you. Qin Xiao's last few words were to Qin Xingxuan. She politely nodded and said, Yes, grandfather. As soon as the referee commenced the start of the fight, that man named Li Qi rushed forwards with several fierce strikes. He hoped to end the battle as soon as possible. He had the advantage in every aspect. It would be easy to finish he battle early. He began to utilize the secret skill passed down through the Li family, the five sacred mountains saber art. This kind of swordsmanship was overwhelming as if a mountain were falling down upon you. Each slash and thrust was accompanied by an incomparably imposing sense of power. It was able to instantly overwhelm anyone of a lesser cultivation level. Even with an equal cultivation, it was difficult to defend against this strike that crushed down on you like innumerable mountains. Most would just succumb to the demolishing heavy attack. As soon as Li Qi wielded his saber, the air filled with the whistling of the wind, as if an entire orchestra were playing a battle song. The saber in his hand was 500 jinns. It was the perfect combination to display the overwhelming power of the five sacred mountains saber art. If the enemy's weapon quality was less, then the weapon would simply break apart. Tai Fung saw Li Qi's come chopping down and his eyes hardened, his complexion changing. He knew of Li Qi's secret move. He sunk his waist and steadied his legs. With both hands gripping the broken sword, his body erupted with a flood of turbulent true essence that poured into the blade. Facing Li Qi's overwhelming strike, he could only meet him head on with all of his strength. But as Tai Fung poured his true essence into the sword, his heart gave a slight skip. The true essence was flowing as if as if it were much smoother than before. Tai Fung had already had this sword for several months. Before now, when he poured his true essence into the blade, it was like pouring water into a drainage ditch. The sword couldn't absorb much true essence, and in fact wasted a lot. But this time the blade was sucking up his true essence like an eddying current. The smoothness of absorption was incomparable, and there wasn't a single feeling of waste. How can it be like this? Tai Fung didn't have any time to think with Li Qi's saber coming down on him, so he simply cried out and cut his blade upwards. With his common low-grade army martial skill, Total Annihilation Strike, he met Li Qi's secret high-tier martial skill passed down through his family, the Five Sacred Mountains Saber Art. Their blades collided any a loud explosion filled the air. The collision of true essence erupted into the air, and the floor of the area was smashed apart. Li Qi was forced backwards three or four feet, but Tai Fung was also forced back a few steps. Evenly matched, Tai Fung gasped and looked at the blade in his hand, his face filling with color of disbelief. He had never fought before with Li Qi before, and had only heard of him. After that strike now, 
he finally realized how fearful this man truly was. Before, he would have suffered some light wounds, not how he had managed to keep that saber of his in check. He knew with absolute certainty that it was not his own strength that increased, but this sword of his had changed. Was it because of the inscription symbol from yesterday? Tai Fung did not understand exactly how inscriptions worked, but knew that they could strengthen weapons. Tai Fung thought they might increase the sharpness of the blade, but after testing it out yesterday on several trees he did not feel anything different, so he had been disappointed. He had never realized that the inscription technique used true essence to enhance the strength of the weapon. Was this really the inscription symbol of an apprentice? How could it be so fierce? Although he did not understand the pricing of most inscriptions, in his heart he absolutely knew that with such strength and such a powerful effect, there was no way that this inscription could be bought with only 100 gold tails. With just a collision, Li Qi had been struck back down to reality. This man had taken his saber strike with that broken blade and had come out even, perhaps even higher. This man was terrifying. Good. Chin Sio praised. The ordinary army martial skill was able to keep off Li Qi's five sacred mountain saber skill with a broken blade. This Tai Fung is good. Very good. Mr. Mu Yi, what do you think? Mu Yi wrinkled his brow and was at a loss for words. Although he and Chin Sio had about the same level of cultivation, he was also an inscription master, so his understanding of treasures naturally exceeded Chin Sio. In that brief strike a moment ago, he clearly saw that Tai Fung's broken blade was not any less amazing than Li Qi's saber. And that was because the true essence that poured from that blade had even shocked him. How could it be like this? Looking at the damaged blade, he could see that it wasn't a high-grade treasure. Could it be because of an inscription symbol? Chapter 20. Inscription Skill. Bang! As Mr. Mu Yi was thinking, Tai Fung and Li Qi collided yet again in another dazzling shower of sparks. Both of them were violent and vicious warriors. Each of their moves was met head-on with another. But Tai Fung relied on a broken sword to evenly match Li Qi, and even the brilliance of the true essence that burst from his sword exceeded Li Qi's saber by far. In the next clash, Li Qi made a careless mistake and was scratched by Tai Fung's sword. Although Li Qi's armor was also a rare treasure, the opposition's sword contained a dangerous true essence that pervaded and drilled through his body. Li Qi's face instantly turned ash white as he almost spit a mouthful of blood. Even Qin Xiao noticed that the sword was strange. He looked at Mu Yi and said, It looks to me like I underestimated that sword. What rank of treasure would it be in the human step? Mu Yi replied, It definitely is a lower rank treasure within the human step. He tapped his fingers against his arm rest as he pondered what the possible cause was. At this moment, Qin Xingxuan who had been carefully observing the battle, opened her mouth and said, Master, perhaps on this treasure was engraved a symbol by a great inscription master. Mu Yi said, I also suspect this. I was thinking which master's skills this could belong to, even if the sword were already damaged to this state, for it to be able to command such power. As they talked amongst themselves, the fight on the stage was reaching its finale. Li Qi had been injured and could no longer hold back anything else. It was time to use sixth type of the five sacred mountains saber skill. He had just learned this skill and was saving it as his killer move in the final match, but right now he had no choice but to use it otherwise he would suffer defeat. Li Qi crossed his saber on his chest, and the true essence within him began to rumble as he said, Tai Feng, I acknowledge your strength, you are a true master. With your ordinary martial skills you have pushed me to the point of hurting my pride and have me use my strongest blow but it ends now. Get ready to meet my final strike. The black dragon will descend from the mountains. Li Qi cried out as he poured the entirety of his true essence into his saber. The black saber suddenly shined with a brilliant and haughty orange light. Li Qi lifted the saber high up above his heads and aimed at Tai Feng, then slashed downwards in a fierce divide. At that moment, several horrifying and faint shades emerged in the air. This was the claws of the black dragon. He's already managed to form the black dragon, Shades. This Li Qi is truly accomplished in the Li family's saber arts. Tai Feng will find it impossible to resist this strike. As the black dragon rushed towards him, Tai Feng knew that this was Li Qi's strongest move. Although the black dragon contained an energy that would frighten most warriors, at this moment Tai Feng felt nothing in his heart but an incomparable calm. Without the slightest hint of fear, he gripped his sword with both hands. 
He could feel the thick fighting intention from the sword as if it were an old friend. Fuck your mom. You think you've won, but I will be the winner. Tai Fung's heart abandoned all needless thoughts. He let out a tremendous roar that cracked the air and compressed every last ounce of remaining true essence into his sword. The true essence in the blade had been compressed to its very limit. At this time it suddenly erupted with an overwhelming strength. A dazzlingly bright light emitted from all degrees as a volcanic true essence erupted from that sword. It turned into a brilliant rainbow that shot forward like a blazing meteor straight into the black dragon's shade. Overwhelming all opposition, overwhelming all enemies, overwhelming all creation. This was the skill of the, overwhelming rune, instant violent strike. Bang! There was a huge explosion and the inconceivable occurred. The black dragon shade had been cut in half by Tai Fung's blade. Li Qi was flung off stage upside down like a rag doll as he spit blood. Chin Xiao's eyes lit as he saw this scene. True essence had condensed into reality. How was this possible? That bright light was clearly true essence, but to use true essence like that required at least the pulse condensation period for martial artists to use. Tai Fung was only at the bone forging boundary, so how? At this time on the field, as soon as Li Qi had been struck off stage, Tai Fung collapsed to his knees. His true essence had been completely spent. He supported himself with this sword as he kneeled. Both eyes gazed reverently at the flames that were traced from the inscription symbol. This symbol. Did it help him itself? He held out his hand and gently stroked the one-inch wide flame inscription. A stream of fighting spirit continually transmitted from the inscription, and Tai Fung felt a very close, almost familial bond with it. The referee hopped on stage and announced Tai Fung's victory. This was a stunning upset. The talented and rising star Li Qi had been defeated by Tai Fung. Qin Xiao looked deep at Tai Fung, and said to Mu Yi, It seems I was right just now. How did the true essence change shape? How did Tai Fung do this? It likely wasn't some martial skill. It appears so. Mu Yi took a deep breath. His eyes showed a trace of shock. He said, If I'm not wrong, then that is a skill of the inscription symbol. The inscriptions could change the flow of true essence and send out skills. In the Sky Fortune Kingdom, such techniques have been nearly all lost. Skill of the inscription. Chin Xiao was stunned. He did not completely understand inscription skills, but he had seen him before. Eighty years ago, when he commanded the army to fight the Eastern Sun Country, he had fought the generals and seen the skills of the inscription symbols at that time. To think that after a period of 80 years, he would see it once again. He thought on this and then said to a soldier, pass down the order, have Tai Fung come to see me. Yes, Tai Fung had not thought that Marshal Chin would ask to see him personally. This was truly the greatest of honors. In ordinary circumstances, the military officers did not have the qualifications to see Marshal Chin directly. Although he had passed through countless life and death situations, but as soon as he saw the marshal, an extremely heavy wave of pressure forced him to kneel. He said, Tai Fung greets the marshal. Stand up. Chin Seo waved. I called you here to ask you a question. Where did your sword come from? Reporting to the marshal, three months ago it was taken from the enemy after a battle. Oh, let me have a look. Yes. Tai Fung presented his sword. Chin Seo flicked a finger on the blade as a clear sound rang in the air. Thought it was long, he could tell there was a trace of disharmony. The sword was good, but it was broken. Chin Seo showed the sword to Mu Yi. Mu Yi held the sword in his hands and locked his gaze onto the flame engraving. He reached out a hand and touched the inscription. He closed his eyes as he perceived the soul force. Mu Yi stood still for a very long time. He had not said a single word but Chin Seo patiently waited. After a good period of time passed, Mu Yi finally opened his eyes. He turned and let Qin Xingxuan hold it. It was impossible for her to tell anything from it, but he only wanted her to be able to feel this master's work. Qin Xingxuan held the sword to her body and let her soul force sink into the flame engraved symbol. Because she was so focused, her pair of elegant eyebrows couldn't help but gently twitch. How is it? Mu Yi asked Qin Xingxuan. Qin Xingxuan replied, Xingxuan's talent is too poor. I only sensed that it was full of incomparably mysterious symbols and lines. It should stem from the hand of a master. Mu Yi said, it's normal to not be able to tell. After the inscription is finished, the secret symbols and runes will be hidden in the treasure. It is difficult to see, 
especially with an inscription this complex and intricate. It is startling, but only if there were more than I could found out more secrets. After Mu Yi said that, Tai Feng said, reporting to the marshal, Tai Feng purchased this inscription symbol at the shop. There were two for sale, but regrettably I only purchased one. If Master Mu Yi has a need, I shall go to the shop to purchase another. Hmm, Chin Seo startled. You bought this inscription, it wasn't originally on the sword. Yes, I personally engraved it yesterday. Mu Yi heard Tai Feng's words and was immediately excited. He asked, where did you buy it at? The city square. City square. Mu Yi paused. In his impression, the goods there were at most one or two hundred gold tails. How would they sell an inscription symbol? Moreover, with Tai Feng's family background, how could he afford it? Therefore Mu Yi said with some doubt, your family is ordinary as far as I know. How did you afford such an expensive inscription symbol? Tai Feng hesitated and then said truthfully, this is. At the time I purchased it, it was marked at 100 gold tails. In the end I was just able to afford this. One Hun. How much was it? The usually calm Mu Yi's eyes widened like saucers and he panted. 100 gold tails. This sold at 100 gold tails. Quote. 